Welcome to the Dungeon Crawl Classics Road Crew Game Stories from Valtara. I am your judge, Shadowfoot, and this will be an ongoing actual play of the Dungeon Crawl Classics RPG in a homebrew region of my making. We'll follow a group of villagers as they seek to be more than just lowly craftsmen and peasants, seeking riches and glory through sword and sorcery, or die trying. The following is episode 6. We rejoin our party in Elm's Reach, where they have discovered rumor that several members of the Order of the Gauntlet have passed through recently, and the barber has suggested they seek them out. Will the party catch up and confront the Order, or will they find something else along their path? Find out as we travel back to Valtara. Welcome to Stories from Valtara, everyone. Um, as we pick up, everyone is in the tavern. Um, you guys have woken up in the morning. You have headed down to get your breakfast that came with your room. Um, as you guys sit together and talk a little bit, you discuss what had happened the night before, and you know you hear a little bit more conversation this morning, and you guys picked up on two new things from people that were talking about. Um, one was that there was a old man who was fairly wealthy um, over in Clearwall who passed away recently. Um, he didn't have any relatives or family, so his house is currently sitting unguarded, uh, you know, still full of stuff. Um, no one's decided what to do with it yet. And then the other was that uh, there is a cemetery nearby that seems to be basically something's happening that the dead aren't staying dead. And a woman um, was like panicked. She thinks that her husband and son had gone to visit their, you know, relatives that had passed on and she hasn't heard from them in a couple days. Um, and she believes that they went to that cemetery. Um, outside of that, you guys know that there are, you know, constant monsters that come out of the north. Um, so if you guys wanted to stay up here and do a few things for a few more days before, for he before heading back south, um, those are kind of like the rumors and things that you've heard around town. When I was hanging around in the tavern, um, would I have heard anything different? Uh, yeah, you stayed back, uh, with, uh, with the two caravan members um when uh, everyone else went up north to fight and things like that um or no not mm -hmm. when everyone went north to fight when everyone went to visit the uh, the mayor um anything else that you heard let's see you know what i'm looking for <laughs> uh i guess uh hundo um you learned something when you went to visit uh the the temple there and visit your family member uh, about a certain order that had come through town recently. Do you remember that conversation? What? No, a certain, <laughs> I didn't make out the noun. What was it? A certain what that came through town? Uh, so you had visited your, uh, was it your niece in the temple? Yeah. 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 And she told you that, you know, one exciting thing had happened recently and that uh, some, some order of the gauntlet had come through. Um, you knowing uh, the oh, barber and his backstory, uh, would you have told him about this? Yes, absolutely. Barbara and I are, are besties. Nice, good man. <laughs> so the uh, order of the gauntlet come through recently and headed, uh, I believe it was east from, from town. Um, so that's what else you would have heard. Right. And, uh, but I forget what the uh, order of the gauntlet's uh, significance is. They're, uh, are they after the barber? Or? No. So the, the order... hunters that took my son. Oh, yeah. They oh, uh, hunt magic users, non you know non clerics basically, uh, non nature based. So like elves, um, as long as they stick to you know nature based music and or nature based magic, um, they're pretty much you know kept an eye on, but not persecuted. But uh, arcane users are generally hunted down, um, and either taken. you know taken or outright killed, depending on how the interaction goes. And they took your son? Oh, well, let's... Uh, you want to go get these guys? Absolutely. This is personal. <laughs> uh, they, are, they are the reason him? this version of the barber exists from the peaceful uh, village friend that you grew up with. Right. Well, uh, are we... Uh, how big was this order of the gauntlet when they can't see town? Uh, she, you know, told you that she saw... Uh, roughly five five members, um, basically the leader of the group and four of his acolytes, 
or leader of this party anyway. He's not le necessarily the leader of the Order of the Gauntlet, but uh, the leader of this, you know, search party. All right. Uh, sure, that sounds like a mission. Yeah, at best, I'd like to kill them all. Um, at least <laughs> we could track them, see if we can find out where more of them are or where they're going or what they're doing, where they base themselves. Any of that is useful. All right, well, then how do you want to try to pick up their trail? What do we know of the east? Uh, from like, here, what have picked up so far? From here, if you were to head east, um, you, know, you would follow the, the Greenwood all the way and basically until it hit the mountains. Um, between here and the mountains, um, there's not a lot of information on any kind of towns or villages and stuff like that. There's, uh, you know, plenty of area out there, so you would assume there's, you know, something at least, but there's uh, no known towns. Um, and yeah, really, you have, you have no information going east from here. The Greenwood is the magical forest where all the all the creatures are coming out of, right? Yep. Um, did you guys have any leftover business in the Greenwood? We could kill two birds with one stone, or six birds with one stone. I don't um, think so. We did go. Did we? We killed something in the Greenwood, right? Yeah, you. Uh, there was basically. Uh an alarm bell kind of sounded off that there was a couple creatures um, that were near the edge. Um, and then you and an rival party went looking for it. You guys ended up finding it and killing it and uh, getting the prize money. What, what was that? Forget. Uh, it was two basically like demon frog toads things that had come out right. of the woods. All right. And Barbara, you realize we had to uh, leave that battle against the thieves before the the big Cyclops was killed. So there's still a, uh, at least a leader and some unknown number of thieves on our way south again. I understand. Normally, I, I would be right with you on going back there and finishing the job. Um, but you know you know what this means to me. And yeah. I, I'm, I'm happy to do that as soon as this business is done. I have no problem going back down there. No, well, I don't want it at all. I'm on your right. All right. Well, all right, I would well, say you guys probably need to spend at least two more days in town to for the barber to fully heal up, in which time you can try to learn a little bit more about possibly where the order was heading. Because you would assume that they picked up supplies or whatever else they needed here, and possibly somebody got some information on, on where they were going. Yeah, I would be asking lots of questions like how often they come through here? Do they always come from the same direction? What does anybody know about them? Okay. Anything well, like that. I'll say you guys basically spend two more days at least in town. Um, and uh, go ahead. If you're you know actively searching for that kind of information, uh, just give me a personality check. Okay. So, of course, my strongest trait. 13. Oh, yeah. All Even right. the minus one. Right there in that mid-range there. So you do pick up on some information. Um, you find out that uh, basically they haven't been through for quite a good amount of time. Um, they don't come through that often, the Order of the Gauntlet. And you know this from, from where you live, too, that you don't uh, see them very often. It's, it's, it's extremely rare um, as arcane users are less and less prevalent. And the ones that are about keep themselves so well hidden that uh, you know there's no reason for them to be out all the time. Uh, they don't actively just search for no reason. They go only when they hear of, of rumors. Um, so they don't come through very often. And other than them heading east, um, you also pick up on a small rumor that there was like an abandoned uh, old wizard's tower that somebody was living in. And that's about it. Okay. Yeah, so apparently they had asked if anybody had, you know, asked a few questions about that um, abandoned tower. Um, and that's all the questions that anybody asked uh, or, or heard. Um, so that's the only information or lead that uh, you could get from town. And that tower is to the east? To the east. We should try to find that tower. It's probably um, yeah. <clears throat> during, during the couple of days, uh, Pete um, would uh, try to heal somebody's broken limbs. Um, 
he still has that quest from his god. Yeah, I would say, because I think even, too, like, when we first got into town, um, everyone kind of split off and did their things. Uh, Pete went to uh, find a local clergy of, uh, I believe, is it, is it Shul that you follow? Uh, Danethar. Ba- Danethar, there it is. Yeah, Danethar. So, yeah, you would have gone and tried to find that um, and spent, uh, I think we've been up here for coming up on, like, five or six days at, at a minimum already. Um, and you would have spent some time to do those kind of things and, and definitely found the ability to, to heal some people. But people do get hurt here all the time. Like I said, it's a town with um, no specific guards, um, but the entire town are part of, like, the militia. So, you know, certain people are on, you know, quote-unquote guard duty here and there. Um, but uh, there's also lots of um, monster hunter mercenary types that, uh, you know, fight off the creatures that come out of the Greenwood, and they quite often get injured. So... You definitely would have um, been able to find some people to heal and uh, clear up your um, disapproval and your disapproval cleared and any additional missions that the your your god would have had for you by this point. Okay, thanks. Yeah, I, I just it it, uh, it had a minus on lay on hands for me, so I just wanted to make sure that was topped up. Yep. Um, yeah, you definitely took you some time, and uh, you know your lay on hands wasn't as strong, so you had to spend extra time healing them. Um, but you eventually got them healed back up, and I would say at this point too, you're going to get uh, one more luck back through all of the additional um, service to your god that you did. Yay! I've spent too much of that, so that's good. <laughs> all right. Um, can I buy some studded leather? You absolutely can buy some studded leather. I'm getting ready for a fight. <laughs> all right so studded leather is going to cost you 45 gold okay and i will go ahead and uh oh do you already have studded leather or did you grab it already no i just i just entered it in there yeah right. i just changed my padded to studded perfect that works uh so um, plus three minus two d8 that. you're good okay um and then i'll give some pete you still have disapproval no, uh, he's clear. clear up? He's clear. Yeah, yeah. clear. Oh, okay, all right. I'll give you some gold later when you have disapproval again. Yeah, after I from your, it from up. your fickle, your fickle god. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. All right. So, what's the plan? Uh, yeah, I'm ready. To, I'm ready to head out. I'm, I'm like eager. I'm chomping at the bit. Very, very impatient. Two days is too long. But I see the need to heal and prepare. Barbara, you should uh, just. Sorry? You go ahead. Uh, well, that's it for me. I'm, I'm ready to go if you guys are ready to go. I got armor, weapons. Do we need, um, I guess we need some supplies or are we going to hunt? I don't suppose we could. I know we've got those two guys with the carriage. We probably shouldn't bring that along if that's going to slow us down. Oh, yeah, they, they won't be coming. They, they don't adventure. They basically just take the, you know, they work for the company, so they just move things up and down. So if you guys are heading east, um, they may head south without you. Do we have enough money to go horseback the whole party? Probably not. Huh? Um, let's see. Uh, I don't have that much gold. Need I a... could buy a pony. Yeah, donkey or mule is eight. A regular horse is 75. A pony is 30. And then you have to buy, uh, you know, general barding there. Yeah. We want to bring some hired muscle. There's some other um, adventurer people around here, right? Yeah, that company. Yeah, there's, like I said, there's, there's constant mercenaries and things like that. Just thought I wouldn't mind having a couple people to spend. Okay, you go back to uh, you know the couple different taverns and things like that. Tried to speak with some of the mercenaries out there. Uh, who's going to try to convince one to come? This is personality, not me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, before you roll, 
before you roll, uh, what are you telling them? How is the order regarded by other people? Do they like them, or do they think they're kind of problematic? Uh, generally, people try to steer clear of them. Um, it really depends on the person. Uh, there's those that believe magic is evil, and so they 100% support the order and would not go against them necessarily. There's others who, you know, again, believe that they're, that the magic is evil, but don't believe in what the order do, um, so they kind of stay, steer clear of them. Um, and then there's those that are just like terrified of them. Like, well, these people kill somebody, you know, what if, you know, I have, you know, they think I'm magic, they're going to kill me and they just absolutely steer clear of them. Um, they know that the order of the gauntlet is very, very powerful. Um, they've heard, you know, all the stories, you know, these guys are mage hunters, they kill wizards and they know how powerful wizards are. So, um, most of them generally try to stay steer clear. So let's just say it's a, uh, you know, uh, we saw some people who we think might have kidnapped this guy's son and, and uh, we're going after them uh, for information, maybe to rescue the son. We've heard there's a tower out there that they might be holed up in. Mm -hmm. right, or at least they'll give us links to where the rest of them are. What kind of payment uh, is going to be their next question? What kind of payment can you offer? What's your price? Gold. Depends on how long we're going to be out. Uh, depends on what kind of combat you anticipate getting into. There'll probably be a fight. I'm counting on it. Well, if, uh, if we're not looking to fight and you're just looking for an escort of some sort, I'd be willing to go for, say, uh... Five gold for a ten days' work, but if uh, combat is anticipated, uh, I'm going to be looking for at least, at least fifteen. I bring my own gear, and uh, if there's any treasure to be had, an equal share. All right. Okay. Let's go for the, what is it, five, you said, for the regular fee? Uh, it'd be five if you guys do not anticipate combat. Um, you know, if it's just general guards and they have to defend you against, you know, like an animal that comes out of the woods, like wolves or random things like that, like engage in mm -hmm. combat and help and stuff like that. I mean, they see that you're, you guys are most likely uh, fairly adequate yourselves. Um, so these guys are, you know, not much above you. They're basically on your level. Um, but in order to, to go and, uh, you know, join your crew, uh, guaranteed pavement of at least five just to come along. Um, if you guys anticipate, you know, heavier combat, um, you know, more dangerous situations, um, at least 15 per week, and then um, equal share of any treasure that's found. Let's say 10 up front, and then the final five after we see how well you perform. Okay. Uh, so with that then, um, you'll be looking to roll at least a 14 on the personality check to get these guys to, to come with you. Is that me? I nudge somebody else. <laughs> Pete, maybe? Who's got a high personality? Not me. I got, what, a seven? Yeah. The gods are with us on this trip. I've got so a seven. They will, they will protect the mercenaries as well, I tell them. Specifically, Danthar. Nope. And a little bit soft. Um, with right, that... I'll try it. Go ahead. Can I try it as well? Yeah, go ahead. Well, I look like it's not working from his effort. <laughs> uh, they're not seen too well convinced. Uh, again, the mercenaries here have it pretty good. You know, these creatures come out of the woods all the time. They make pretty good money off of just killing those and, and you know, harvesting any goods and parts they can. Um, I'd say with a 10, uh, a couple of people overhear you nearby that are tired of working the lumber and looking to do something else to get out of town possibly for a little bit. Um, so a general, um, let's see here, we'll say a general, man I'll throw in another five to get the Merc to come. I will say a, a man, a man, a general man at arms, like a, a general person, <laughs> part of the, uh, the town's, uh, you know, militia, militia, um, is willing to come with you one.
OK. But his raid's going to be cheaper then, right? Because he's just militia. He's not an actual mercenary. Yep. Yeah, he's coming at uh, basically, you know, the five gold. He heard that. And he's like, five gold? I'll take five gold a week to, to accompany you guys. Including combat, defense, all of it? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, is uh, equal share of the treasure, too, as well? No. <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, half share, half share of the treasure. Consider it when we see how well you fight. Oh, okay, uh, okay. This guy looks like he's been a bit down on his luck and uh, things like that, and looks like he needs a little bit of extra money, so he's willing to come along. All right, I'll pay the five gold. Okay. Since how much? Is... How much to hire an owl bear? <laughs> an owl bear? Well, uh, first you have to find somebody that can tame an owl bear. Uh, you haven't heard of anyone like that, especially not in this town. We need an owl bear. <laughs> <laughs> what's this? This old militia guy. What's his name? This old militia guy's name. Tell you what, I can tell you his name. His name is. Not feeling very confident about him. <laughs> uh, yeah, he doesn't look super confident either. Uh, we, we moved from competent mercenary to red shirt. He tells you his name <laughs> is Tars. T A R S. Get red your face, there. <laughs> yeah. Tars the militia man. Okay. All right. Ready to head off then? Actually, um, could I buy some armor as well? I, uh, I would like to upgrade it. Absolutely. What are you looking to purchase? Uh, some chain mail. Chain mail? Okay. Oh, nice. Chain mail is 150 gold. Yep. Okay. Uh, sorry, who was that for? Uh, Pete. Pete. Got it. Okay. So, Pete, some chain mail. I'll take the gold off. Uh, you do have leather armor. Uh, did you want to hold on to that or sell that back? Um, sell it because I okay. don't want to carry it. It's used, so you'll get 10 gold back. Sure. All right, so I'll remove the leather armor, and I'll drop some chain mail into your equipment. So your AC is now plus 5, so that should put you up to 15. I got a shield too, so oh, it'll be. So 16, 16 when you have the shield active. Okay, so we'll remember that. And now you're minus five for pen, uh, for check penalties and D12 on the fumble die. All right. Anybody else need any equipment before you take off? No. Okay. I've spent my money so much that uh, I can't really afford it right now. <laughs> I might grab a shield. Just in case. Okay. Uh, shield is just 10 gold. All right. So you grab a shield, throw it over your back. And I would say being a, a thief, you can find one that's more of that, like, small buckler size. Nice. Definitely easy to find up here. And uh, that was, oh, yeah, 10 gold. So you got that. All okay. right. Uh, with that, uh, you ask uh, the man at arms um, about you know the the wizard tower and stuff like that, and he tells you, you know, he kind of thinks about it for a little bit, um, and says, "Well, the only tower I know of is a watchtower about uh, I think it's about uh, six or seven days travel east of here. There's no roads, so it is hard travel, but uh, but I, I've I've heard stories of it. Could possibly help you find that one." Right. That's what we got to go on. So. Alright, so you head out of town. Lead the way, Tars. We will take mm -hmm. you back to Tars already getting We'll take you back to the uh the home page here. All right, so as you guys head off, uh, the first uh, couple days, again, are going to be fairly smooth. Um, you are, you know, close to town, so you're still passing homes and farms and things like that. Um, as you make it through your first day, uh, let's have somebody roll me a d20. Just one person, roll me that d20. Oh. 
Nice. There it is. Perfect. A 16. 16. All right. With that, we'll say that. I'm going to roll this really quick. Uh, it's a little bit chillier than the weather has been. It's cooling off just a little bit, and there is a light breeze going through. Um, so it's a little bit cooler. Not a lot, but it's starting to cool off a little bit. Seems like you're getting towards the end of summer, possibly. Um, so they're starting to get a little bit of a chill breeze. You are further up north, and you are now heading east towards the mountains anyways. So it's getting a little bit chillier as you guys are traveling. Um, for the first day of travel, um, as you're close to town, I'm just going to have one roll to see if you guys encounter anything. You are near the Greenwood, so even being near town, slightly more dangerous. Uh, so with that, I'll have Oro. Go ahead and roll me a 2d6. <coughs> Nope, all is quiet on this uh, this part of the road. Um, so again, uh, you're having to go through the woods. Again, there's no no real uh, road here. And the greenwood, as I said too, it grows out of control. So it's just constantly growing. It has to be cut back. Um, so as you go, you find different patches of the woods that has like come further down south. Um, do you guys just continue as straight of a path as possible or kind of follow the the woods like you would follow a river staying just outside of it what does uh, tars recommend since he's been here uh he'd absolutely recommend going around the woods just because you know that he knows that you know all sorts of strange creatures come out of the woods um you know if you were to go straight through you wouldn't be too deep inside of it but you just never know is what he tells you he said stay out of the but, woods yeah he recommends yeah. staying out of the woods and just following around which yeah you know, he says... This is the dangerous magic wood, right? Where yep. all the crazy yep. stuff is happening? Yep. Everything yeah, north of you just... is the green wood, where the you know creatures just seem to come from all over. Um, so as you guys travel, again, the, the forest line itself almost like spurts out in certain areas where it hasn't been kept back. Um, so it winds almost like you're following a river. So if you guys follow the edge of that, it'll probably add a little bit of time to your travel, um, but it could be a lot safer. And then also going through the woods, they're they're very, very dense and thick, which could slow you down as well. So you're not really necessarily sure which way would be faster. So the safer way would be to stay out of the woods. Yeah, let's probably do that. Okay. All right. Well, then you make it through your first day. So everybody gets their one HP back. So I think that's enough to get the barber back up to full. Everybody else is at full health still. Um, and you guys start off uh, the following morning making your second day. Uh, so on your second day, let's see, uh, have Sam go ahead and roll me the 2d6 for this day's travel. Still a good, quiet day. Um, you hear possibly while you're going through the woods at some point a strange howl um, that kind of puts you on edge and you kind of watch the woods for the rest of that day just travel at least for a few hours until you feel like you've gotten a good distance away from wherever that howl came from um you know some birds come out at some point which startle you guys thinking of something bigger is coming out of the woods but just some birds that fly off and head south a little bit um and you continue making your day pass through um an area with a couple more little huts that uh you don't see anybody currently living in um, possibly hunters that are out for the day, but these are very, very small, like one room houses. Um, possibly some people that live out here and, you know, don't want to be necessarily in the middle of society. Um, but at this point you're starting to sense that, uh, you've gotten to basically the edge of civilization, um, as far as heading East goes. And, uh, you guys get to your second night as the sun starts to set making camp. Um, so with this, we will make another check for the night's camp. Is there anyone, anything anyone wants to do before they make camp? Maybe just like, if we have time, just some basic hunting to keep up our supplies. Okay. Go ahead and give me a luck check. No. <laughs> Very unlucky. <laughs> uh, yeah, it seems that uh, possibly the eeriness of the, uh, the forest up here to the north keeps a lot of the natural creatures away as well. They probably stay a bit south of here. Um, because they know the strangeness as well. So as you've been traveling away this, this, this direction, you've kind of noticed that too, that there seems to be less wildlife than you would normally see, um, especially living down in Ravenswood. 
Uh, so no wildlife uh, to speak of, but uh, you guys end up making camp. Um, so with this then, I'll have Zavin um, roll 2d6 for me. Uh, so we can see if anything comes out of the forest at night. Uh, another quiet night. You guys are getting lucky here. Doesn't seem to be anything coming out. Uh, with a six, it's pretty pretty quiet. I think maybe at some point during the night you hear an owl hoot and possibly um, a small creature, maybe uh, something about you know the size of a large mouse or something. You know, you hear squeal, um, but that is about it. Um, so with that too, as the morning comes up, Neved, roll me another d20. All right. Same roll. 16, all right. Using up all my high rolls. <laughs> and uh, as you guys are heading east, it seems to be get even chillier. So um, at this point, uh, it's about 20 degrees chillier than when you guys left town. Um, getting colder and colder. Again, that light breeze kind of picking up a little bit um, as you guys are heading this direction. With you guys hiking and having all your bags and all that kind of stuff during the day, definitely no problem. You're keeping yourselves plenty warm. Uh, there's no snow or rain at this point, um, but uh, it's definitely getting a little bit cooler. At night, uh, you guys stay either a little bit closer to the fire or you know use a little bit more um, of your bed rolls and stuff to sleep under to keep yourselves a bit warmer. All right, third day begins. Uh, you come to another spot where the forest seems to jut out a little bit further. So this looks like it's probably going to take you an extra half a day, you think, uh, to, to go around this area to get back in line with where you guys are heading. Um, as your third day starts, uh, we're back to Oro. Go ahead and roll me 2d6 uh, for your third day of travel. Keep rolling low. Good stuff, good stuff. Uh, again, uh, through this day... Uh, you guys believe you see a shadow, a large creature, like just f fly overhead. But by the time you look up to see what caused that shadow, you don't see anything. Um, so you're not sure exactly if you guys even saw anything or what it was, if there was something. Um, but it's, it, for a second, you guys had a shadow just come whoosh, right over you guys. Um, but didn't get to see what caused the shadow. Um, really not a dragon. <laughs> Uh, Barbara, <laughs> you can go ahead and uh, roll again for luck checks uh, for hunting. Okay. No, oh. Yeah, it's just uh, haven't seen any deer, um, haven't seen any rabbits or anything else of those that nature um, along this way. You know, you've seen some birds and things like that fly over, but uh, nothing that you could really hunt or uh, take down. One thing I should be trying to do every day is uh, stare at this purple stone and see if I can figure out any uh, functions for it. Uh, absolutely. It was... uh, so what gonna, is that? It's going to be Intelli just basically an intelligence check. And uh, I believe for that one you're trying to roll, I think it was like a 16. Oh. Just under. You think you're getting a sense of what it is. Your, your first day sitting there, you think you're getting a sense of what it is. Um, and then it's, it's like something on the tip of your tongue. Something that's right there. You know it, but can't put words to it. Um, so go ahead and try it for the second day. Try it again? Yep. Okay. Yeah, that'll be your first day of travel. You're on your third, so you get three checks here. Second day in your frustration, um, it seems to have gotten away from you. Ooh. Third day, it's, it's right back there. You, you, you almost know what it is. So you're getting close. You feel like you're about to know what it is. Having rolled two 15s, I'll give you a plus one on your next. Um, so when you stop for your fourth day, you can roll again. All right. Uh, so you guys have made your way um, around that, that edge of the woods that has you know, jutted out a bit further, um, continuing along your path towards this tower that this man-at-arms um, believes that he is aware of. Um, or heard stories about, and uh, you guys set down to make camp for your fourth night. Um, so I think I had, who was it, roll the 2d6s here. That was Hundo. So with that, um, we are up to Sam. You can go ahead and roll 2d6 for making camp. 2d? 2d6. Okay. All right. Ten. Uh, as you guys make camp, um, you start sitting down and uh, you know eating some food and stuff like that. Uh, Pete, you can go ahead and roll another intelligence check. This time with a additional plus one, having rolled two fifteens. 
You met me, right? Just... Yep. Yeah, stop it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. All right. With an 18, this time you sit down for a couple hours. As everyone sets their camp up, you, you, know, you put your bedroll down, and you sit there and start staring at this purple stone again and start, you know, just really focusing inward on the stone. As you're looking at the stone, you can almost see, like, inside of it, just like the swirling um, celestial body almost. And as you're looking at the stone, um, you finally start to get a sense of what it is. And this apparently is a Ayun stone. Um, so with study, you've identified that this stone, um, and, and as you're studying it too, you learn its name. And I'll let you come up with what that name is, which is basically its magic word. As you say that magic word and toss it into the air over your head, it'll begin to orbit your head and it will deflect the next range attack that is aimed at you that hits. Um, and it works wow. once a day. Wow. And as it deflects nice. and takes that hit, it drops to the ground. So you have to pick it back up. So I'll right, go I... ahead and drop that into your inventory. I'm going to name it Pluto. All right. <laughs> nice. <laughs> So that is its magic word then. So I will put in here, Pluto. Activate. Pluto. Okay. That is now in your inventory and I will remove the strange purple gem that you had in your inventory. And you're good. Thank you. All right. So as you guys are sitting here uh, this night, um, you go ahead and who's going to have the, the first watch? I'll have first watch. Okay. As everyone's sitting down and kind of relaxing, uh, you're spending a little bit more time watching, you know, the woods, especially to the north. Uh, you guys are far enough away from the woods, you're not like right up against it, um, that if something were to come out of the woods, you would definitely have plenty of time to react to it. Um, so go ahead and just give me a, um, intelligence check as you're watching the woods. That's a minus one. Let's see. Oh yeah, plenty. All right. So as you're watching the woods, um, you hear something coming from the opposite direction, from the south. Um, it's sounds like small chittering of some sort. Um, so you have uh, plenty of heads up as you see two large creatures crawling along the ground. Um, and you call out and let your team know about this. But as they are approaching... I just say a lot. You see two large um, centipedes crawling your direction. Wow. And these things uh, look hungry. They're coming at you. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and these are not really intelligence creatures. So you guys are going to be straight into combat with these guys. So everyone can go ahead and roll initiative. Weirdest. Why are we rolling D tens? Uh, is everyone using? You're not using two handed weapon, are you? Um, no, would it be a D sixteen in that case? Barbara, you don't have a two handed, so you shouldn't be rolling. That's really D tens. It looks like. No, they're D sixteen. D sixteen. Okay. Yeah, I don't know why you're rolling two handed weapons. Uh, we'll say I'm, I got my bow then. That's fine. Okay. All right. Uh, so with that, uh, as you guys hear the creatures coming, um, you can reposition yourselves really quick before I begin combat. Uh, like up a tree, you mean, kind of thing? Or... Yeah, you guys got a good warning that these creatures were coming, so you can reposition yourselves however you'd like. The man-at-arms man is going to back up a little bit. He's uh, He's a bit worried. <laughs> All right, this well, is what we pay you for. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually going to stand beside the man at arms and make sure he holds the line here. Okay. Actually, and I'm going to be I, next to. Uh, actually, I'm just. Here. Trying, I'd like to pelt these centipedes with uh, arrows. Try to see if I can. If they're thin enough, maybe I can stake one to the ground. Absolutely. 
All right. Well, with that, looks like Pete's going to be up first, then Hundo, a centipede, Levi, the man at arms, the barber, and the second centipede is going last. So, with that, beginning combat. And Pete, you are up. Um, I am just going to ready my shield and warhammer for if this thing, this bug comes up, I'm going to try to squash it. All right. Hundo. I'm going to shoot high and try to bring the arrow down to, like, stake one of these centipedes, see if I can really slow it down. All right. So, nice. Special move there. We'll say if, it's, if it goes off, his movement will be reduced by half. Um, oh, I forgot my. Sorry. There we go. Nice. Hey, 16 with a 3, it goes off. Let me pop this sheet out damage, so I have next. an easy look at it. All right, so with their AC, that does hit. So you launch your arrow high in an arcing fashion and have aimed it just right. You see it come down the back half of the creature. Uh, the creature itself is probably almost two feet long, um, and it hits it just right in the back. It looks like it pinned it to the ground, and you see it squirming and um, snap the arrow as it continues moving forward. Um, but you've definitely seen that it used up a lot of effort to try to break free of that arrow, and it takes nine points of damage. Um, and, uh, it's still standing, but looks quite hurt. Nice shot. Oops. All right. Great shot. With that, uh, the centipede begins to move forward, and it will get to only move half of its speed. Um, these guys do have a high speed, but I'll say, uh, because you hit it with the arrow, it spent most of its movement trying to move, it'll take up to there is where it will stop, unable to get to you guys. All right. Uh, with that, Levi, you are up. That's perfect. I need to shoot it. All right. Shoot it with the bow. All right. Shooting the one in front or in the back? The one that just moved up. Okay, got it. With a 10, you shoot your arrow at it, and it seems to bounce right off of its chitinous hide um, and then soar off into the woods on the opposite side. All right, the man-at-arms is uh, a little bit frightened. All he has is his battle axe. Uh, so you see him kind of readying his battle axe and looks a little bit shaky. Um, you know, his battle axe itself looks more like a wood chopping axe. So you can tell this guy was probably more of a uh, um, one of the guys that was a lumber lumber worker um but he's got his axe up wielding it uh standing next to pete um looks like he's waiting with pete to wait for these creatures to step forward hoping that the archers will take care of him before they get to him all right barber steady on tars yeah i'm gonna shoot uh this one okay get it uh 22 oh, yeah definitely gonna hit and for four points of damage that is going to finish this one off you oh see, yeah, good to be back. See that creature get hit with uh, the arrow straight in the head as it's charging forward. It's reeling up, and as it reels up, it shows just a little bit of its underbelly, and that arrow hits it straight in the underbelly, and then you see it, all of its legs start to shake a little bit, and the thing falls flat on the ground. All right, with that, the next centipede is up, and I'm just going to roll, because it's looking at the main party that's ahead of it, so from left to right... It is charging all the way at the barber. It runs up at the barber and will attempt to bite you. That's a pretty high roll there. Yep, so that is going to hit you for four points of damage. Wow. Uh, go ahead and give me a fortitude saving throw. Does that sound good? Yeah, there, sure. There's all my high rolls gone. All right, you are going to lose one point of stamina currently as well. This is temporary, so mark it off as temporary. Okay. As this poison starts to, as it bites you, you feel a poison start to come in. It bites you like on your leg, and you feel that part of your leg start to tighten up. All right, Pete, you are up. I will move. Oops. And 
and try to squash it. Hammer time. A 16 for one point of damage. You smash it and you see that you break like a couple of its little legs as it's uh, trying to reel back for a second bite. Only 98 more to go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Hundo. Uh, let's uh, switch to Longsword. And give him a good bash. All right. With a 12, you go to hit it, but it moves too quickly, and you end up swinging and missing. All right. Dead Centipede and Levi, you are up. I'm going to pop off a shot. Okay. Ooh. Don't hit me. Hey, wait. <laughs> <laughs> with an 11 that is a miss so roll me one more d20 high you hit oh, a no. high you hit an ally low you miss well I feel like it's happened to me a couple times so. <laughs> ooh high <laughs> alright there's three people engaged um, in combat so roll me a uh, d3 Pete is one Hundo is two Barber is three All right, so Hundo. Oof. So roll one more attack against Hundo. I think Hundo has a decent AC here. Oh, now I roll good. Uh, two points of damage to Hundo as that arrow misses it. You, you probably actually fire the arrow, and again, it hits off of its armor and deflects into Hundo's leg, just slicing across his leg. Whoopsies. <laughs> All right. Uh, the man at arms. Uh, who hired the man at arms? Who was the one that uh, got the the luck check? Or sorry, the I personality check? Him. I paid him. Okay, go ahead and roll me a personality check for him. With my personality? Yep. Ooh, it was almost on a 20. On a 7. Uh, he's looking pretty nervous right now and unwilling to move forward. Um, so he's kind of staying behind you guys. Um, you, you, you got it. You got it. <laughs> All right. Um, I want one gold back. You're only worth four. <laughs> every time you move, every time you step back, you lose one gold payment. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Barbara, you are up. Uh, switching to buckler and longsword. Attacking the critter. All right. 17 definitely hits for three points of damage. And you slice across its head, and you see it kind of reel back a little bit, a bit stunned, um, but it is still coming for you. And with that, it is going to strike out at one of the three of you, uh, back at the barber. All okay. right. One more bite against the barber. A 15 miss. miss. So this time as it tries to bite you, you get your sword up in time and it bites down on your sword as you push it back. All right, Pete. Okay. The new armor's coming in handy. <clears throat> I'm going to try to take out another couple of legs. Ooh. A 13. Not going to hit the easy, I don't think. Just misses as you go to swing at it. Uh, this time, ready for you. It seems to be very quick at looking at each of you. You know, it's an insect. It has multiple eyes and things like that. So it sees you coming and pulls its tail or the back half of itself out of the way right as you go to swing. So you end up smashing your warhammer on the ground right next to it. All right, Hundo. All right. Uh, for my deed, I'm going to try to peg it right behind the head you know once again uh try to slow it down by putting it into the ground all right nice. that definitely will hit and for 11 points of damage Kill. you nice. smash this thing the entire front like foot of it is like sliced in half as you bring your sword through 
it basically it reels up to bite at you again and sh again showing its underbelly you bring your sword in low slicing up from the bottom and slicing it in half and it collapses to the ground dead as well and everyone can give themselves two experience points for that fight and both of them are dead All right. With that, uh, you guys set back to finish your, your night. Uh, you take out these two creatures, move their strange bodies a little bit further away from your camp. Um, so hoping that if anything else comes out, it'll go after those instead because they're already dead. Easy food. Um, and is, it, uh, is there any trophy we can take that we could sell back in town? Something that somebody would want? Looking at these creatures, um, you don't really see anything that you would recognize um you know obviously they had some kind of poison um but uh i don't think anybody has any kind of animal hunting background do they no alchemist no. barber mercenary and a squire yeah so none of you guys have any background with you know uh dissecting creatures and things like that so you wouldn't really know necessarily how to get anything worthwhile off of these that anybody would want all right, so the rest of your night goes by uh, fairly smooth. Uh, you guys wake up for your fifth day of travel. So as you guys head off on your fifth day of travel, let's go ahead and have a, another uh, check. I think this time we're up to... Who rolled the last two D6s? Was that Sam? Yeah, I did. All right, Zavin, two D6s for our fifth day of travel. Ooh. Right. Fifth day of travel, you guys continuing uh, to make your path. You come to a spot where there's a bit of some large rock formations. Um, you can go south around the rock formations, which looks like it would take you probably a little while, or you could head north around the rock formations, and that'll press you up like right against the uh, right against the greenwood. But it would most likely be a shorter trip. Take the shorter way. What do you guys think? Sure. All right. Okay. With that, I'm just going to move a few of these trees around really quick. The forest is quite dense up to your north here. Still a few trees down below you. forest very very dense up to the north but there are still trees down to the south so as you guys head through this kind of pathway here staying as far away from the forest as you possibly can but you are guys are pressed like kind of right up against it at this point um, so as you guys are moving this way um, gonna go ahead and have something come out of the woods Here comes your owl bear. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so with this, um, I need uh, everyone to go ahead and make an intelligence check. Eleven for me. Okay. Ooh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and mm. uh, let's see for the man at arms the yeah, man at arms is going to be a straight d20 here nope uh, nobody really sees it coming uh, so all of a sudden um, since you guys are so close you don't see the shadow coming overhead until it's right on top of you and suddenly uh, Pete, the shadow gets bright, uh, gets dark over you, and you feel something grab, like two claws, dig into your shoulders and lift you off the ground, um, and start taking you, taking you forward away from the party. As this large creature flies over, this large bat-like creature flies over, grabs your shoulders and starts flying back towards the woods with you. So you're like, 
maybe 10 feet off the ground at this point as this large creature is trying to fly away with you. You are wearing armor and you're a bit heavy, so it doesn't take you up too high, but it looks like it is carrying you away. Um, so that was its surprise round as it grabs you and flies off. Um, and everybody is in combat. You guys see Pete being taken from the party, um, flying off towards the Greenwood. Ooh, it rolled a 21 for its uh, initiative. Do we roll initiative or keep the yep. same initiative? Uh, roll initiative. Roll. I am unprepared. <laughs> All right. With that, it is carrying the prey off. Um, it's not going to make any additional bite attacks, but with that, it does get a little bit further away. So as it is going, uh, it will fly away. You see Pete getting further and further away. And that is what it does on its turn. So with that, we are up to Levi. You see your ally being taken away. <laughs> Shit. Uh, let me see first. Our healer! No! <laughs> Can't have him. <laughs> um, if I were to try to shoot this but i also have to maybe hit feet uh i would say for this one he is hanging so there is the chance but i'll say it's a lower chance um it'll be uh, basically a 15 or above you can hit him if you if you miss yeah. the last one is a good chance because there's three people around the creature this time it's just one and it's up in the air so much lower chance of hitting an ally yeah. and try to shoot <laughs> I'd say uh, spells wise, yeah, you don't really have any spells for ranged attacks currently. Yeah, no. uh, an eleven. I'll let you know that uh, that misses by one. If you want to burn a point of luck, burn a point of luck. All right, you burn <laughs> a point of luck. Uh, you release your arrow. Um, and as it flies, it seems like it's going to fly over, but possibly a little gust of wind <laughs> hits it and it ducks down and it hits the creature right in the back shoulder over its wing. As it does that, you see it struggle to keep in the air and it drops Pete to the ground. Pete drops as it's flying and you now see it, uh, take that six points of damage and it has turned around to come back and try to pick up its meal one more time. All right. With that, the man at arms goes charging forward next to, to Levi. Um, and looks like he wants to go help, but, uh, you know, with no ranged attacks, he can't get too far. All right, Barber. Uh, yeah, I'll go one, two, three, four, five, six. And take a shot at this thing. Okay. With my bow. Uh, that will definitely oh, yeah, nice. hit for three points of damage. And How hurt does it look from that? When you hit that one, it's turned around and it's flying back, focused on picking up its meal, Pete. It's diving in to pick him up. You release your arrow, it goes straight into its chest, and it dive bombs into the ground, hitting the ground next to Pete and no longer moving. Nice. It seems to be dead. So we'll give you each another point of experience for that one. I'm going to go make sure it's dead. All right. Yeah. You go charging <laughs> over and hit it with your Just sword. Smash it, to with it. <laughs> smash it to pieces. All right. You look, and this thing smells awful. It looks like a humanoid, uh, almost like, you know, you've heard stories of uh, bugbears and things like that. So it looks like a, you know, cross between, you know, it stands upright on two legs its arms go into these large wings and uh, has this face that looks, you know, a bit like a, a, an orc or goblin kind of face, but it's covered in fur and has these large, large ears. Um, it's a grotesque creature that you've probably never seen before. Um, but uh, it, it tried taking your, your cleric, but you took it down before it could get away. How dare you try to take our healer? <laughs> Peter, are you okay? Yeah, if I'm surprised I didn't break a leg from that fall, but yeah, appreciate the help, gentlemen. 
Sorry, how much XP was that? Uh, one XP for that one. All right, so day five's already been a fairly exciting. Um, so you guys continue making your way through um, this little crevice between these large rock formations and the forest. Um, the one creature attacked you, and you continue along your way, this time moving probably at a slightly higher pace, or are you going to go slower and more stealthy? We're already taking the short road, so maybe we'll go a little cautiously. Okay, so you slow your walk down. Mm -hmm. you, you, you go right up against the rocks, keeping yourself as much distance from the trees as possible, um, and uh, a little bit more stealthy, kind of trying to stay in between things, you know, maybe even going around some of the rocks uh, formations to keep yourself hidden from the forest. Um, stealthy, Definitely stealthy. scanning the tree line. Yeah, as much as you possibly can, being stealthy, making your way through. Uh, by the time it gets to be about mid to late afternoon, you, you see you've come to the end of that rock formation. They've continued your way. Uh, so you can head a bit further south this time to get a little bit further away from the forest again and uh, find a spot uh, a couple hours later to make camp. Uh, Barbara, you can go ahead and do another luck check to see if you find any food. Can I heal a point? Uh, six. Uh, with a six, uh, you guys do see um, a, I would say at this point, a couple, couple rabbits um, that you guys are able to to hunt. And I'd say with, rabbit barbecue. Yeah, with, with the party that you got, you guys have no problem gap gathering these rabbits, um, which gives you food for a couple days. Nice. All right. Um, so and we get to eat a hot meal, which is important too. Right. <laughs> and uh, so you guys end up st stopping for the night again, making your camp. And I think we're up to the barber. You can go ahead and roll me 2d6 for your night's camp. A nine. Uh, again, this time you hear several animal sounds off in the woods. Some howling again and what sounds like cackling and sounds like some kind of wolf, coyote, something along those kind of lines. Like maybe a pack of them have killed something and are eating it off in the woods. So it's a bit of an unsettling sound as you guys are making your camp for the night. And it goes on for like an hour of these this howling as this feeding frenzy seems to be going on. So it sets you guys on edge a little bit, making it a little bit harder to rest. Um, but you guys are able to get your rest through the night. So those who are hurt take another point of healing. And you guys wake up in the morning. Ready to take off on your sixth day. Um, at this point, uh, the man at arms tells you that uh, you know that rock formation was one of the you know things that are on route to this tower. So he believes you guys are still heading in the correct direction, and that the uh, the tower itself is set upon a an isolated kind of hill in the middle of a, a field to the south of the trees. And that uh, the hill itself is almost like surrounded by trees. And then the top of the hill you can see kind of coming over the, the tree line. And then the tower sits on top of that. Um, so you guys will definitely be able to identify and see it once it comes into view. Do we see any immediate signs of someone being there? Uh, you guys don't see it yet. Um, he's just telling you kind of what to keep an eye out for as you guys are getting closer. Oh, okay. Um, and that there's also, uh, it, it is said that there is a river to the east of the, the hill that it rests upon. It used to look over that, uh, that, that river and that there was a bridge. He doesn't know if the bridge is still standing or not, but apparently that bridge was, um, you know, basically entrance into this region um, back in the day. It'd be a good base for us if we uh, clear it out. All right, and uh, with that, uh, you guys head off on your sixth day of travel. So, Oro, go ahead and roll me 2d6 for the day's travel. Ten, you guys continue along your travels. Um, again, you see um, maybe a large creature at the edge of the the greenwood. You don't quite make out what it is. You kind of see this large shadowed shape peering out from the the forest edge. Um, you're far enough away that you know all you get is a kind of silhouette of the creature there. Um, it doesn't seem to come out of the forest, and it you know follows you. It seems for like an hour or so. Um, 
you guys move further away from the forest, a little bit further south, um, giving yourself a bit more distance. And uh, about after, like I said, about an hour or so of it following you, you see its silhouette disappear as it possibly headed back further deeper into the greenwood and has left you guys. All right, you're making camp for your sixth day. As you make your sixth day camp, um, go ahead and give me an intelligence check. As you everybody? scan, yeah, everybody. As you guys are all looking around, scanning for this. Ooh, nice. Oh yeah. As you guys are scanning for the uh, the hill. Ooh, an eighteen. Levi sees nothing. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So Hundo and the barber, and then the man at arms again. Just a straight twenty on that for him. Uh, he sees so the man at arms, Hundo and barber. You guys all see. Uh, that possibly off on kind of the horizon line ahead of you, maybe a little bit closer than the horizon line, um, out in the middle of the field, you do see this isolated hill. Um, it does look like there is something dark on top of it. Um, it doesn't look like a full full tower of any kind, maybe ruins of some sort. Um, but you do see something off in the distance that you believe you'll be able to get to the next day. Nice. All right, so you guys see that kind of as, as the sun is setting. Um, so you guys make your camp. Um, so with that, Sam, go ahead and roll me 2d6 for this night's camp. All right, eight. This night goes fairly smooth. You guys stay further south away from the, the forest line. You can almost not even make out the edge of the greenwood at this point, um, as far south as you guys have gone. Um, so the night uh, seems to go by uh, uneventful, quiet even. No, no sounds, maybe some crickets, but that's about it. Uh, so you guys wake up in the morning. As the sun is rising, you get a little bit better vision of the, the silhouette of that hill. Uh, and it definitely looks like this is the hill that you are looking for. Um, so you guys take off in the morning. The distance between you and there takes you to probably until two maybe even three o'clock in the afternoon to make it to the base of the hill as you guys are approaching um it's getting more and more into sight you do see this this hill it's it's, it's quite large um and the tree line around it is very very dense um and outside of that hill trees in this area are fairly sparse this is more open plains kind of area um, so this hill is like really the only thing with trees on it um, in the immediate vicinity um, as you start to begin to approach a little bit closer, you start to make out the shapes of what is on top of this hill. And it looks like, um, from what you can see, uh, you see one large kind of square tower that uh, looks like the top portion of it is broken down. Maybe originally it was three or four stories. Right now it looks to be about two, with the, the second floor being you know, a partial floor. And then it looks like there's possibly a couple other small structures um, directly next to it. Um, kind of connected by, you know, walkway, hallway type things. Um, but uh, don't can't make out much more than that. You don't see any movement as you guys are approaching. Um, so as you guys approach the tree line, what would you like to do? Any tracks going towards the hill? Uh, give me a luck check to see if you see anything. Oh, yeah. All right. With a two... Uh, this side that you're entering from, you do see um, what looks like some feathers. And um, outside of some like feathers that have been kind of dropped behind, uh, you see a couple large footprints that you can't quite make out. You believe them to be footprints. Um, they are probably twice the size of a normal person's footprint. And that is about all you see. It's not good. <laughs> it doesn't sound like it's a home for one of these knights. Yeah. Where are we to this one? Uh, so basically, from where you are, you think it would take you maybe half an hour to 45 minutes to get up to the tower. So this hill, uh -huh. um, the hill is surrounded by trees, and the trees kind of go part way up the hill, and then the trees stop. And you can see the top of the hill just poking out from the top of the tree line with the tower on top of it. Oh, 
Well, it's open ground between here and the the hill. There's no no avoiding that unless we wait till nighttime. Should we do that? Or just go for it? I don't I don't mind being a bit stealthy here. Wait till nightfall. See if we can drop some arrows into an open window or something or a torch. Maybe for, smoke them out again. Sneak up. Yeah. Whatever it is might have an advantage at night over us. Uh, you know, I guess outside of Levi, can anybody see in the dark? It's okay. a good point. The man interrupts that. Well, I, 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 could, I could carry a torch for us. I want to go walk up there and take a look. We'll be easily spotted carrying a torch up the hill at night time. I mean, we could just send him now. He could just walk up there and take a look. If he doesn't come back, we'll know something's there. <laughs> he if look, he comes he, back and he says there's something there. He, look, he looks at you a bit nervously. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, either way, we get some information, right? Uh, what if we sweeten the deal? I'll offer him two gold pieces just to walk up that hill. All right. Check it out. Go ahead and do a personality check with a plus two. Or we'll add two to your roll. A seven? Uh -huh. He's like, oh, he said, you want to send me alone? I don't think so. <laughs> mm. Right. I'll go look. Go up. I'll go too. I'm willing to go. I'll go together if we're going to go. Okay. Let's take a look. We can always retreat if we have to. All right. So you start making your way up. Are you trying to be a bit stealthy? Yeah. All right. Uh, so, Barbara, you have a stealth skill. Um, everyone else will basically be rolling a D10 plus their... Um, actually, just roll a D20 because I think most of you have armor and stuff on. So you can just do an agility check. And then minus I'll, your armor penalties. Yeah. So I'll just sneak silently minus my armor. <laughs> oh, it already... Huh? Not a good start. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, you guys are being noisy as you guys head up this way. It seems like there are quite a bit of branches and things on the ground, some dried leaves. So as you guys are heading up this way... Uh, it is, uh, it's, it's very, very difficult to make, uh, to, to stay silent. You're snapping branches and things like that. You make a lot of noise as you guys are heading up. Um, as you guys get a bit closer to the tower itself, um, I'm going to roll for this. A three. Uh, as you guys get up towards the tower itself, it looks quiet. You don't see anything moving around. You don't hear any noises. Um. Everything seems to be basically just abandoned, uh, from what you can tell. There is, is there a door? Inside? There's a gap of about maybe a hundred feet between the end of the tree line and where the tower like begins, and here you can clearly see that there are four distinct structures. Um, it looks like most of it's crumbling down. Um, so what you see ahead of you as you approach is what looks like walls that enclose a courtyard of sorts. Um, from there, you see a small hallway with like no roof. So basically walls that create this, this pathway leading to a small structure. Um, coming off a different side of this courtyard, you see uh, what looks like a larger, a slightly larger building. Um, it looks to be about the same size in like width and length as the tower itself, which sits next to that building. Um, and the tower itself looks to be about, like I said, two stories with the second story being partially crumbled down. Um, you see enough debris and rubble on the ground around the tower that uh, it was most likely at one point at least three, if not four stories tall. So we've got to go down a hallway. When we first go through the main gate? 
Yeah, there's no the the you know hallways, quote unquote hallways. Um, they're they're yeah. not necessarily hallways. What it looks like is the they funnel. are they're just like decorative walls. Um, they have like archways, so they're they're open walls, but they're like basically archway walls that uh, kind of make the uh, the the shape of a pathway. So you don't necessarily have to follow them. Oh, okay. Are all these buildings made of stone? These are like stone ruins, basically. Yeah. And we don't hear any sounds? You hear no sounds currently. Is there a doorway in the tower? There is a door to the tower. Um, it is a, it's quite a large doorway, um, and there is a wooden door on the tower. And you can see the wooden door itself. And that looks closed and yep. fixed and non-ruinous. Uh, yeah, it looks like it's uh, it's been repaired. So it's not like uh, in pristine shape at all, but it definitely looks like uh, some boards were nailed back onto it to repair it a bit. And you've given us two sides. You said footprints were a little bigger than usual. And this doorway, is this big enough for a giant to go through? Uh, you'd say not. maybe not a giant. Um, it's uh, the top. The, the doorway probably stands about... Uh, Maybe maybe ten feet tall and uh, about three to four feet wide, four feet wide, roughly. Is it reasonable to think about using a grappling hook to go to the top of the 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 tower is broken, right? So it doesn't have a it, there's no roof on it. We could probably get up and look down into it. Uh, yeah, you absolutely believe that you can get up on onto the second level if you were to you know use a grappling hook and climb up the side, and then the tower itself they're made from large stones, so even the barber looks at that and goes, ah, I could climb that, no problem. All right. All right, I think I'd like to try to do that just to uh, you know peek down, try to be quiet about it, um, and look look down into the tower without opening the door. All right. Uh, so, for uh, is everybody going or just couple? Of you? I'll go with you. Okay, Levi yeah. and Pete. Yeah. I'll stick around on the ground with Tars. Yeah, I'm I sure got Tars. It doesn't run away. Yeah. yeah. All, All right. right. I'm gonna get him. Us... Get him ready to open the door. <laughs> 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 All right. With that, I'm just gonna move a few of these things around. Um, I didn't make a map specifically for this, so I'll just do it on the fly. Move all this stuff up, out of the way. All right, so as you guys approach, Say right about here. Nope, that's not the shape I wanted. My bad. That's an area of effect shape. I don't want that. I want this. All right, that is the main tower right there. So we'll just fill this in with a gray. All right, so there is a small little pathway here. You guys are gonna approach the tower itself to begin with. The pathway leads off in this direction before reaching another building. Open courtyard area stands here. And the last little building stands here. All right, so with that, let me grab all these them all to be full so if you have 
Easy view. Oh, I still only did one at a time. That's all right. Luckily, I've done this enough times that I've gotten fairly quick at it. All right, so this is the structure you see. Uh, the pathways are all basically, like I said, either like crumbling walls that look like they were like decorative archway kind of walls and things like that. And then the four larger shapes are the different rooms. Um, so the tower is the one up here at the top right. Uh, <clears throat> you see another structure um, to the left of that. Uh, to the south of that, the larger structure on the bottom is the open courtyard. So it's surrounded by walls, but it seems to be an open courtyard. And then there's one smaller building off in the distance. Um, so as you guys approach the tower, Hundo and the barber look to go up. Uh, Pete, uh, Levi, where are you guys hanging out? You going to go towards the tower or stay back towards the woods? Um, I'm just going to go up against the wall in case just all of a sudden arrows or something start to fly out. Okay. Try to use it as a, a barrier. All right. Man-at-arms comes with you. All right, so uh, Hundo, just give me one uh, basically ranged attack to throw the grappling hook up there and see if you can get it to latch onto something. Yeah, you can just roll the uh, d20 plus a d3. There we go, that works perfect. All right, uh, so with a, uh, a, a four, uh, and uh, you, you throw it up there, and the first throw, uh, you don't quite get it far enough, and it hits the wall before going over the edge and falls back down. Miserable. All right. Well, let's give it another shot. <laughs> Cannot seem to get this thing over the edge. Uh, this part, Barber, uh, you offer probably to just climb up there and then put the hook on something. <laughs> I even lost my fleeting luck. That's terrible. Sure, I'll do that. All right. So Barber climbs up this time. He takes the rope and ties it off to something. Uh, no problem as he climbs his way up there. As you climb up to the top, uh, the the floor itself um, is a little bit uh, ramshackle. Again, there's bits of debris here and there. The wood itself doesn't look super sturdy. Uh, it looks like someone has thrown a bunch of like leaves and other branches and stuff up here to like close off the roof, maybe make this into a roof itself. Um, and as you look around a little bit, uh, you see one spot where there's a bit of an opening, um, and it looks like a ladder comes up. Everybody's able to climb up, right? Like I can find a place to anchor the... Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you can, you can anchor it up. Okay. So Hundo's up there with you now. He can climb up there without too much trouble. Yeah, let's take a look down that hatch. Uh, you take a look down the hatch, um, go ahead and you don't have to roll for this. As you're looking down inside the hatch, um, you get a bit closer and you hear almost like what well, sounds like squawking of some sort, like, like chickens or roosters of some sort, um, down inside. Um, as you're looking down, it's, it's dark inside, uh, but, uh, you can hear it and you hear the kind of the fluttering of like wings, you know, shaking a little bit. Um, looking down inside, it sounds like there's some bird type creatures inside here, but you can't really make out what they are. Um, it's dark inside, so you see possibly in one corner there's a, a pile of straw that looks like it makes maybe a makeshift bed. And uh, that's about all you can see from up, up where you are. Just I just mouth the word harpy <laughs> to Hundo. <laughs> I don't trust this. Can we motion uh, Zavin to come up with his infravision? Can absolutely motion for me to come up. No, I'm I'm a human, so I don't know. I Le Levi should. Yeah. Or Levi, yeah. All right, Levi, you climbing up? I climb up. Okay, with the rope, no problem. Yeah. Uh, you're able to get up there. Um, you look down inside, and with your infravision, um, you get a bit better view. Uh, there's definitely a uh, straw and it looks like some cloth and stuff on top of that that makes up a bed. Um, it's quite large, um, this pile. And then the bird-like creatures that you see 
Um, go ahead and give me an intelligence check to see if you've seen these creatures before. Just trying to beat basically an 11. Hopefully they're not Herpes. Conquered. And goose. Beat no 11. You don't recognize the creature, but they stand a bit taller and skinnier than a chicken or rooster you've seen. Uh, their beaks look a bit strange. Um, the feathers are almost patchy with bits of like scale almost. Um, but they, they just look like weird, twisted chickens. Basilisks. Still don't trust it. Let's throw Tars down there. Tars, go down. I'll let everybody else know what I see. Right, Barbara, are you heading up as well to join him? Tars? Uh, Pete. Um, what, what, I, I... Pete climbing down? So presumably these are behind the door on the first floor, right? So what if I just open the door and climb up and these things leave? Maybe they'll just go out the door. Uh, you open the door then? Yeah, I'll open it and then start climbing up. Okay, so you open the door and then come around to climb up and the man at arms yeah. will join you as well. So everybody's up on top of the tower now. Um, go ahead and Pete, give me a luck check since you open the door to see if these creatures react. No goody. <laughs> Don't get turned to stone. My luck is very bad right now. Good enough. Wow. All right. uh, so with that, there are six of these creatures inside. Um, Pete, go ahead and roll me a D100 a percentile to see how what percent of these creatures leave. 25%. So we'll say with that, uh, I'll just round it up to 30. So this is two of these creatures leave. So you're down to four of these creatures still inside. Two of them kind of, you know, their heads bob around a little bit as they see the door open. It looks like they're waiting expectedly. And then as nothing comes in, um, two of them head out and start kind of like pecking around. And then you see them disappear off through the doorway and they don't come back inside, but the other four are still inside. You want to pot shot him with flaming arrows or something? We could. We could try to pick off these two of them that are outside from the top of the tower. They can't get to us, right? Do we see any gear like along the walls? Were these mounts for other people? Uh, you don't see any gear of any kind. Um, maybe in one corner you see like a sack of something, but you can't tell what's inside of it. Um, but these creatures are fairly small. They are, you know, like a large rooster of some sort large chicken kind of size um so they're definitely not like even your your buddy half pint wouldn't be able to ride these things okay. is the feathers that they have the same as the feathers we saw outside yeah they look about the same so it could be the owner of these creatures is out there somewhere and will come back yeah when i from the top of the tower we can see pretty far right all around uh, yeah, you can see pretty far. Um, again, since this sits up on top of the hill, there's nothing obstructing your view other than the edge of the forest. You wouldn't be able to see like immediately the edge of the, on what's on the other side of the edge of the forest. Um, but then you can see beyond that. So you guys can see like the river a bit down to the to the east, um, and then to the north you see off to the greenwood, and to the south and the west, um, kind of just off into these plains, and then you see off in the horizon, you know, other things. Um, but uh, from where you are, as you scan around, go ahead and give me a intelligence check. Yeah, I want to look for any kind of movement or something, signs. Not with that rule. Uh, yeah, with a six, you don't catch anything. You you don't see any movement anywhere. Neither does Levi. Undo, you see anything? Pete doesn't see anything. <laughs> oh, man. Nope. You guys aren't catching We're anything. We're the worst for intelligence. <laughs> you guys see see no movement, uh, so there's currently nothing going on to really grab your attention. All right, right, let's. I'll shoot one of these chicken things. Okay, so you shoot I, one I don't trust things. it. <laughs> I want to see, like, what it's going to do. 43 right. to attack one point of damage. There are four of these things inside. Yeah, that's not promising. 
All right. With a 23 for one point of damage, you definitely hit one of them. And the arrow kind of uh, goes, it, it's kind of fluttering its wings, and you see it kind of hit one of the wings a little bit as the creature squawks and looks up in your direction. Um, the other ones all begin squawking. So you just, <laughs> as they all start squawking and seems to be panicking at the moment. There's the open door. Go ahead. <laughs> Run. So we're up here looking for these gauntlet guys, right? Uh, they you know, heard rumor that they were heading towards an old abandoned tower. This is the only one that the man of arms really could identify and call out um, that he was aware of. So looking for any signs. Is the up bridge here. is the bridge intact or is it destroyed? The bridge across the river. Uh, looking from where you are right now, it looks like the original stone bridge itself, it collapsed in the middle, um, but there are, it looks like, uh, wood planks and stuff that have been put across it to kind of make it so that people can travel back and forth still. They could have gone in that direction. Mm -hmm. I say to the other guys. Yeah, we should look around for, like, human stuff. If these things are weird enough, they're not really rotten reactors. Yeah, I think we should clear out before the owner of the tower comes back. Yeah, don't be too casual about them. I mean, pocket traces are are chicken shaped things. You know, they can and they can turn you to stone. So, right. I don't think you usually encounter six pocket traces at a time. But let's see, uh, Barbara, you're the one that launched the arrow. Go ahead and give me another luck check to see if you scare any more okay. of them off. Um, you know, oh, yeah, yeah, all right, nice. roll, roll me a d100. There's four left, mm, okay, it's under 30 percent. So that'll basically be this point. One more goes off, the one you hit goes running out the door and takes off off into the distance. Oh. Problem is, the ones that are outside now. They could attack us when we come down. Should we try to kill them with ranged attacks before we come down? They don't even know what we're doing here, right? Maybe. Oh, maybe that one. Yeah, they're not going to know. Or we could just make a break for it. Just climb down and run. And hope that they don't care about us. Levi, being an uh, elf and having some magical affinity, go ahead and roll me an intelligence check. It's not been doing very well. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> Our best stat. Yep. Yeah, yep, there yep. we go. Yep. I'm not, no good rolls today. Not getting any sense of anything magical in the area. Unless I'm fighting or accidentally shooting my comrades. <laughs> <laughs> um... Well, how safe do you think it is, guys, to climb back down the rope? So I do agree that this isn't really what we're here for. Yeah, too, Levi. Um, as you as you were checking around with your dark vision, um, at it looks like where that straw bed is, um, possibly poking out of one corner underneath it, looks to be possibly a trap door of some sort. Hmm. All right, I'll let them know about the trap door. Some possible loots, wizard loots, or giant loots. Okay. Well, we've got three out and three in, and we've got the high ground, so we can just essentially keep firing arrows until we kill them all. Whichever group. I'm okay with that. Yeah. Go for the ones inside first and then close the door. See what's going on in the trap door. Uh, sure. Although the ones outside might get out of range, but that's fine too, right? Yeah. All right. All right, so with that then, we'll throw you guys all into initiative.
So you mean it's not just going to be simply shooting fish in a barrel? <laughs> no, they have wings, and you're firing through like an open trap door. There's no door on top. It's just an opening. So there's a chance that they could possibly get up there. Why Why does Hundo keep rolling a, a D16 for initiative? Uh, you have to unequip your bow where the little hand symbol is on the left. If gotcha. you equip that, okay. yeah, yeah, then it'll that. default to your sword. Then you gotta use your sword. <laughs> that that means. Let's try it. Here, I'll do it for you. I unequipped your your longbow. You can still use it. It's just uh, unequipped yeah, it for just initiative, initiative purposes. Uh, like it gave me a good roll, and I I didn't even roll for it. So, <laughs> <laughs> but I'll watch it next time. See what it's. All good. All right, uh, so with that, uh, nice. One of the cockatrices rolled a zero. The other one rolled a one. <laughs> so they rolled low on their initiative. Oh, right. it's our co- Oh, boy. Oh, so yeah. the barber, you are up first. Um, all right, I'm going to start start firing some arrows uh, inside okay. one of these. Uh, with a 13, How does that look? a 13 just hits, um, digging right into nice. one of the creatures. It squawks in pain um, and begins moving towards the opening. Um, you back That's up a little too. bit and drive them out and make room for Hundo. Yep. Definitely hits. Uh, are you firing the same one that uh, the barber just hit or a different one? Uh, same one. Same one? All right. Six more points of damage to that guy. That arrow takes him. It's looking quite injured at this point. Wow, it's got more than 10 hit points. The man at arms still doesn't have a ranged attack, uh, so he finds like a stone. He's like, oh, I'll join. He throws a rock at the creature. Uh, so this will be, and the rock goes skittering across the ground, not making any damage, and he steps off to the side. <laughs> uh, Pete, I just say, I just say to Tars, yeah, that's okay. Can you just keep a lookout instead? Yeah, he'll move to the edge <laughs> and start watching, especially like the forest that's nearby. Yeah. All right, Pete. Pete does a blessing. Blessing? Uh, self, ally, or object? Uh, Zavin, you're uh, muted in Discord. Ah. <laughs> um, yeah, sorry. I was saying I was going to cast a blessing um, on ally. Okay. So blessing ally at a 15. That is going to be... Ally receives a plus one bonus to all attack rolls for one turn. So who are you blessing? Uh, whoever's next in the initiative order that's shooting a bow. That'll be Levi. So Levi, you have a plus one blessing for ten minutes. All right. The cockatrice is up. So this is one of the uninjured ones. Uh, begins squawking and moving towards the open hatchway. Um, they only have 20 feet of movement, so he's going to move towards it, and you see him starting to flap like he wants to come up the doorway, uh, but can't quite make it up. It almost kind of like lands on one of the ladder rungs. Mm. All right, Levi. I want to shoot the one that's damaged. Okay. Uh, so that'll put it at an 11. Uh, an 11 would just miss. Well, it missed by a couple. Okay, so you release that arrow, and this time the, the creature, having you know got an eye on what's where these arrows are coming from, dodges out of the way, and that one hits across the ground. And the cockatrice is up. So this is the injured one. Again, it will make its movement to start flapping towards the ladder rungs, and all three of them now are at the bottom of the ladder, looking like they are trying to come up. All right, the barber. I'll shoot the one of the ones that's on the rung. Okay. 
see if it'll drive it off the rung and make it not want to do that. An 18 for six points of damage. I'll say with six points of damage as it's flapping, it falls back down to the ground. Nice. All right. Oh, no, you don't. <laughs> Hundo. Uh, can we throw this ladder down? Uh, it seems to be attached, like it's nailed in, and it, it's it's fairly secure. So you can try to um, smash it uh, to where it falls. Uh, that basically just do an attack against the ladder. It doesn't have a super high AC. It looks like the wood's not, you know, new or anything like that. Gotcha. I think I'll keep attacking cockatrice. Ooh, natural 20. All right. That's a wow. 23 for nine points of damage. Uh, which one are you attacking? Uh, well, it's a lot of damage to throw at the injured one, but let's take him out. All right. Uh, so the one that's closest is the one that the barber just hit, the one that was on the rung. So you hit that one for nine points of damage. Uh, go ahead and roll the D8 for me to see what additional damage you do. So it takes the hit from the barber, falls down, and then immediately tries to fly back up. As it's flapping its wings, it comes straight into your shot. The arrow hitting it straight, dead center, and the creature falls to the ground, no longer moving. Nice. So that one is out of commission. All right. Man-at-arms uh, scouting around. He'll just do kind of a check to see what he sees. Oh, uh, yeah. Natural 20. Uh, that is going to be a six. Uh, he suddenly sees uh, the trees uh, to the the northwest uh, begin to move a little bit and like a bird fly out. And he calls out that there's motion to the northwest. Mm -hmm. Papa's coming home. All right, Pete. Um... Well, I'm going to look. What's that? What did he call out? What's, what's coming? Okay, go ahead and give me an intelligence check to kind of peer through and see if you can make out what's coming. Sixteen. Oh, nice. Uh, so with a sixteen, uh, you can just barely make out from where you are uh, the silhouette of what looks to be maybe a ten-foot or so, maybe maybe a little bit bigger than that, um, humanoid creature uh, stomping through the woods. It looks like he's carrying a, a sack of some sort, um, but you can't really make out too much more than that from right now as he's still down in the woods, but it looks like he's heading this direction. All right. Um, How long would it take him to get here? Go ahead. Detail that. Uh, from the distance he is, uh, Pete, you can make out that, uh, you know, probably be you know he's not running back or anything like that he's taking kind of a leisurely pace from what it looks like um but uh you know you probably estimate that you've got a few minutes before he gets here um well we gotta speed up this fight before it gets bad for us so i am going to light a torch and drop it onto the hay down there all right uh just give me uh -oh. a uh, agility check oops all right moved off you uh, so I'll just be a D20 plus zero. So just just roll me a D20. Uh, you light the torch and throw it down there, and it lands kind of next to the hay. Um, you see, like, a couple pieces that are loose start to maybe burn a little bit. Um, so there's a chance the next round that that, that fire will spread. All right. Levi. I'm going to go ahead and try to shoot one of these things. Yes. A nice. 15, that will definitely hit. Um, that, I believe, oh, just enough to, to finish off that creature. So the one that was wounded goes down as well. As it starts to try to make its way up the ladder, it goes down as well. All right, with that, the last one will fly up um, the ladder, landing up top, and there are five of you, so we will roll a D5, and I'll just 
put you in order here from top to bottom. Uh, a two, so at Hundo. So attacking Hundo. With its beak, it tries to peck at you for a 17. I think a 17 is definitely going to hit. So Hundo, you will take two points of damage. And as it bites you... Let's see here. You're getting superpowers. I need a will save. Your chicken man now says, like Spider Man. <laughs> All right. You're trying to shoot for a 13. A 14. You fight it off. Where it pecks you, you feel again your, your skin and muscles start to tighten a little bit. Um, but you're able to fight off the effects, and you do not get petrified. All right, Barbara, you are up. The thing is up now with you on the second level. Yeah, switching a longsword and buckler, taking a swing. A 10 would be a swing and a miss as the thing flaps around it with its wings and hops around and miss you miss. Mm -hmm. All right, Hundo. Oh, yeah, let's do the sort of chat. A 16 for 10 points of damage. You slice through this creature, slicing nice. off like one of its wings almost entirely. Um, it looks quite injured. The man-at-arms, seeing what's going on, is going to turn and attack as well. So he swings his axe at the creature uh, with a 14. That is enough to hit, doing three points of damage. Finally earning his gold. <laughs> and this creature <laughs> looks like it is about to collapse. It is on its last legs. As Pete, you are up. All right. I will try to warhammer it. No. <laughs> oh. mm -mm. You swing wildly wah, wah, and wah. stumble onto your back. All right. Unable to right yourself, you're prone for the next round before you can recover your balance and rise. Not used to this armor yet. <laughs> yeah, you kind of, <laughs> as I said, the roof here looks like it's been covered in leaves and branches and stuff. And as you step to attack, you kind of lose your balance and slip and fall on these things. All right. Levi, you are up. All right, I'm going to use my longsword and try to finish this thing off. Bringing your sword around, you slice right through it and finish this creature, and it collapses to the ground with a bit of a squawk. Alright, all three of them are now dead. And with that, we'll go ahead and end the combat. And you guys can we have, have to make a decision. <laughs> Have another uh, point of experience for that. Nice. Are we going to quickly climb down inside and open the trap door before Papa comes home? Or are we going to vacate the premises or stay in the high ground? I think the tower is probably the best place to defend from. I think I want to stay up there and just start shooting arrows as soon as this guy's in range. But he yeah, just killed like that too. We just killed his chickens. I don't think he's gonna be yeah, nice. Though, right? No, I think this is the best place for us. Maybe even bar that door at the bottom if somebody's got the time. I gotta go down. Knock, and get that, my knock that ladder me. down. No, no, we can do that after if you want. But I gotta go down the ladder, get my torch, make sure it's out, and then I'll bar the door. Okay. Let's pull up our rope too, so we can't get up that way. All right, so Pete, you charge down inside really quick, grabbing your torch, uh, and you close the door. Um, give me a luck check to see if there's anything to, like, bar the door. No, you don't see anything uh, used to lock this door. It seems like uh, it just open and closing would keep the, the cockatrice inside here. Uh, so you don't see anything that could be used to bar the door. Um, while you're down there, you do see like a little bit closer now, especially with the torchlight at first, 
that there's definitely a you know a human sized trap door underneath the straw bed um but it looks like you know it's it's filled with dirt and other stuff so it looks like it hasn't been opened for quite some time um, and then you guys pull up the rope and ready yourselves uh pete do you make it back up the tower or you wait down there yeah i'm gonna climb back up and okay um, hopefully i can i don't know can the ladder be detached or uh as you're climbing up and down it it does seem a bit rickety so you could definitely knock it down if you wanted to yeah i, th I you guys agree i think that's a good plan try to yeah. limit these things options so I'll, I'll knock it down okay <clears throat> um i'd say with a couple swings or at least you know one or two of you could easily easily knock this thing down the nails come out loose and the ladder itself falls down inside um, so you guys can position yourself where you want. Uh, the creature, wherever it was, is coming from the northwest. So as you guys are on the top of the tower here. I'm going to go ahead and cast Magic Fear. Okay. Can do that in between combat, no problem. Maybe not. No, never mind. A little, little bit of a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Why do see. I have a 10? Okay. Uh, I don't know. Something's rolling weird. Your spell check should be a one plus one because yeah. your intelligence is zero and you're level one. So yeah, that's should, should be. Like, should have lost that actually. Probably. Yep. Um. Why is that rolling at a plus ten? Yeah, math math don't work. <laughs> no, that that math don't work. <laughs> uh, let me go to magic yeah, no, my shield. Spell, but... That's why I don't know why it says 10 on my spell check. Cause... That is weird. So I'm going to put plus zero there. So there we go. Yeah. Okay. Make sure the rest of them are good. Yeah, you don't have any additional pluses on any of these. The zero because of the armor. Uh, you should just be at, at a plus one for your spell check and wearing right. leather armor. Um, right, right. Yeah, yeah, it should be yeah. basically plus zero. Yeah, so. Cool. All right. Uh, so that'd be lost for the meantime. All right. Uh, so with that, um, oops, where did uh, where did Levi go? Levi, you're under somebody, aren't you? Oh, did I delete your? I went to delete something. I probably deleted you on accident. Eh, let me throw you back in there. <laughs> Whoops. Ouch. I don't know. How I, I was in your I was in your character, like making sure to clear out that, and then I deleted you. So let's put you back in there. There you go. Back in the fight. <laughs> All right. So you guys have positioned yourself. Levi, you go with where you're at. The man at arms doesn't have any from over here, attacks. right? Yeah. This direction. Yep. Okay. Uh, the man at arms is going to ready himself in front of the trap door. Uh, just in case anything, you know, tries to come up from inside. All right. So with that, uh, we will go ahead and you see coming out of the trees a large figure. Very large. She's wearing like a uh, leather kind of cloth tunic with like a rope tied around the waist. Um, he's carrying a sack and... Uh, that is what you see. So we will go ahead and throw you guys all into initiative again as this creature comes stumbling out of the forest. Does he look taller than the wall? Like, can he reach over the top? Uh, it looks like, uh, you know, maybe if he stretched all the way up, his hand would come pretty close to the top of where the, uh, the collapsed wall is. Okay, so we could be safe on the edge. We don't have to, like, back off from the edge. Possibly. All right, I'll just stay here. Then. <laughs> All right, you guys can go ahead and roll initiative. Looks like the man at arms rolled well. Cyclops rolled terribly. Cyclops. Yeah, as it's getting closer. You notice it has one eye. Did you guys tussle with the Cyclops before? Yeah, Cyclops was the leader of the uh, uh, hmm. the thieves. Yeah, I don't know if this is Cyclops. Hundo was the one that saw that Cyclops, and that Cyclops was actually wearing like much better clothing and possibly even like some armor of some sort. This one looks like uh, it's basically a, a nomad of some sort. Brother. I don't know hmm. if you guys have ever seen um, the Beatles 
yellow submarine like cartoon uh, every time i talk about a cyclops it reminds me of that because there's this part where they're in the submarine and they're going somewhere and it's like hey did you guys see that cyclops and they're like well it had two eyes oh maybe it's a bicyclops <laughs> <laughs> <Bi-clops>. <laughs> <laughs> i love it all right uh, so with that, uh, Man at Arms is actually up first. Uh, Cyclops is last, so that's good for you guys. As this creature comes moving forward, it seems that uh, it's looking around uh, its one eye. Uh, it sees like maybe one of its uh, its cockatrice go running off somewhere, so it seems a bit confused and is looking towards the tower to see how these things got free, and it is heading your direction. Uh, the Man at Arms kind of just like keeps himself low, watching the hole um, leading down just to see if anything else comes through. Um, as he doesn't have any ranged attacks. Pete, you are up. Yeah, he's lookout. Uh, I am going to bless Ally again. Good one. All right. With a 19, that is going to be... The ally receives a plus one bonus to all attack rolls, damage rolls, saving throws, and skill checks and spell checks for one turn. So 10 minutes plus one to basically everything. Uh, who's that going on? Uh, that's Oro. Hundo. Hundo? All right. Hundo, you basically got a plus yeah. one on everything. Levi, you still have plus one on your attacks. All right. So I'm going to open this up and get it ready. There we go. All right. With that, uh, the barber, uh, you are up. All right. Can I take a shot at this guy? You absolutely can take a shot at this guy. Let's do it. Uh, with a, a 12, look. 12 uh, goes sailing over, missing. By a lot or a little? Uh, by a decent amount. I'd say by about okay. four feet or so. <laughs> oh, okay. He's uh, a robust cyclops. Sails over. You kind of aimed a little bit high and it went sailing over. All right. Uh, Hundo. Hang in there one sec. I've messed up my screen. Uh, let's see. I was trying to get a picture of Harry Housen's Cyclops. <laughs> and we haven't, we don't get any surprise bonus on this guy, huh? Uh, tell you what, with that, I would say you get a plus two. You're, you're up on the second level, so you kind of have like higher range. And he's not, he wasn't at least originally aware of you. Um, he hasn't had his turn yet. So you guys release these things. He's not aware of you. So I'll add a plus two. So the barber still would have missed, but by like two feet. (laughs) (laughs) Gonna hit him in the eye. All right. With a 19, you aim for the eye. Uh, Don't quite hit the eye, but it does come across his cheek, um, cutting him across the face um, as he then looks up at you and roars a little bit, his one eye getting wide. Uh, He takes seven points of damage from that (laughs) shot. Doesn't Blast give him another damage? Uh, it right. does, so he's going to take uh, nine points, or sorry, eight points of damage, so he'll take one more point of damage. Nice shot. All right, good shot straight across the bow. All right, with this, he is now aware of you, but Levi, you still get your plus, uh, so you'll have a plus two on this attack. Or no, plus three. Two for having the height and surprise advantage, and plus one for the bless. Oh, Uh, tell you what, Uh, go ahead and make your DC 10 reflex save. If you roll under five, you fell over the edge. (laughs) Oh, no. Oh, just under five. Not under five. Yeah, I said under five. Uh, So you go, you, you move forward, and you take your shot. And for some reason, uh, you lose your balance a little bit, and you stumble forward, catching yourself on the edge before falling over. <laughs> With that, the Cyclops is now aware of you, is going to roar um, quite angrily and uh, start charging towards you guys. You don't see any missile weapons in his hands? Don't see any missile weapons in his hands. He pulls out a large club that he apparently had kind of slung, um, you know, tied to his waist. He pulls that out, drops his sack that he was carrying. As he drops the sack, you see it kind of fall limp, and it looks like berries and stuff come falling out of it as he comes charging towards the tower. 
Oh, he's a peaceful Cyclops. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're technically the bad guys here. We're definitely might have been a peaceful guy. <laughs> All right. Back up to the man at arms. Uh, again, without any ranged weapons, he looks around, um, finds another piece of like stone debris, and is just going to throw that at the creature. Uh, that is going to be a 13, which hits the creature, but he doesn't throw it with enough force to kind of cause any damage. It seems to just bounce off the creature's chest. All right. Pete, you are up. Mars, you are lookout. Just look around. <laughs> um. More blessings? I can, yeah, I can go for the Trinity here and try a blessing on the, the Barba. A 12, I believe, is still a pass. So with a 12... Uh, the ally receives a plus one bonus to all attack rolls for one round. Nice. So for well, your next better attack, than yeah, your next attack, yeah, you'll, I'll you'll, take you'll it. Have a plus one on it. Yeah. All right, Barbara, you are up with your plus one. All right, gonna fire an arrow at this guy. Nice. A That's 24. a twenty-four for six points of damage to him. Another arrow goes straight into his chest. Uh, finding it's Wait, true. So the I'm going to put a point of luck into that. All right, for another point of damage. Uh, well, it'll be a luck it'll die. Or oh, damage. yeah, luck die damage. Yeah, that's right, that's right. And that's only a yeah, one. Why do I point of damage. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this it point, it's got a couple arrows sticking out of it and a cut across its face, um, so it's looking a bit wounded at this point and getting more and more enraged as it's charging forward towards you guys. Hundo. All right, I'm going for that single point of failure, that eye there. All right. Boom, 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 as he's stomping forward. Oh. A 12 will miss this time as the arrow goes flying towards it. It brings up its club like it's going to, uh, getting ready to strike, and the arrow poof, hits the club and is sticking into the club now. 13 doesn't hit because he has a blast, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, 13 doesn't hit. 16. All right, Levi. Mm -hmm. Oof. Levi, unable to, to get his aim here. He's firing wildly. This arrow goes sailing, just completely missing. <laughs> the, the leaves, the leaves are defeating you. <laughs> All right, the Cyclops turn. It is going to charge up to the tower and oh. jump. It's going to leap up, grab the edge of the tower, and start pulling itself up over the edge. Um, OMG. It has a plus one to reflex, so it's basically just going to get a reflex check. That'll be his, his check to try to climb up here. Uh, so he climb, jumps up, grabs the edge, but that's as far as it gets. It's starting to pull itself up onto the tower. All right, with that... Hack its fingers. <laughs> Dab its hands. The, yeah. Uh, the man Cars, at arms... Hack its fingers. The man at arms goes charging over and is going to swing at the creature, its hand, to try to get it down. Uh, with a 15, nice. he oh. just misses, bangs to the side um, as he came over in too much of a hurry and kind of nervously, and then he, he swings and runs back away. <laughs> yeah. All right, Pete, you're up. All right, I'm going to try to smash some fingies. All right. Oh. You too go to swing, and for some reason, as you go to swing, his hand like moves as he's trying to get a better grip, and you hit where his hand just leaves from as he's trying to get a better grip to pull himself up. Back up in case anybody else wants to take a swing. Barber. Yep, I'm coming in. Switch into buckler and blade. Attacking. 13. 13. Misses That's as three well. Shy, right? Yeah, you swing at the same hand that the that Pete just did. Oh. Okay. I'll try one luck die. I don't think it's gonna work. I have to roll three on this. No, oh, I hate you, luck die. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Hundo. Unluckiest you're up. thief ever. I'll 
I don't know. Trying to take the hand out. All right. The 19, you smash the one hand as it's as he's coming up. And this hand is the one that basically has the club in it that he's trying to pull himself up with. You smash that hand, and that hand, you see him pull it back suddenly, and the club drop to the ground. Uh, he takes another six points of damage. Nice. Plus damage. Oh, plus one, yeah. Thank you, thank you. Seven points of damage. All right. With that, you can see his bloodied knuckles now. And Levi, you're up. Seems like I can really get to him. I, yeah, I can't. I meant to move back, but I can't move my guy right now. Oh, I can move you then. Yeah, because it's not your turn yet. Yeah. You can't move. So, yeah, you back up to give space for someone else to move in. Yep. All right. That. Yeah. Gonna get the sword. Slightly better with the sword, but still not good enough as your sword <laughs> tings off of the the stonework. All right. With that, my Cyclops actually is going to get a track, attack then. So he finishes pulling himself up, but he's dropped his club. So he's not going to do as much damage if he does hit you. All right. Hundo is the one that's right in front of him, so he swings at Hundo. Yes. And he rolls a natural one. Nice. His, hand, nice. his hand hurting, he goes to swing at you. As he goes to swing at you, you back up, and he slams his hand into the ground, the one that was hurt. And you see him reel back in pain, and he says something in a language that you don't understand as he grabs his hand. You can see him wincing in pain. Um, and yeah, that is it. That's all he does. All right. With that, then, we are up to the man-at-arms. Uh, let's see. Barbara, go ahead and give me another personality check for him to see. We're going to go with a 12 or above, he'll run forward to attack. Oh, he backs yeah. off. He, he sees this huge, <laughs> humbering hole. He backs up. He's like, whoa. All right. Pete. Uh, Worst can't... bodyguard ever. <laughs> <laughs> um... Is there any way I can melee him at this point? Uh, he's quite large. I would say that at this point, uh, you know, he's basically standing there, and Hundo and Levi are around him, so you can get in there. Yay. Yeah. Woo! All right. One point of damage from the Warhammer as it hits him, so go ahead and roll the D8 as the foe is stepping forward. Yeah, He's nice. going to take eight points of damage. With eight points of damage, you run forward. The, the thing is reaching down to grab at Hundo. Try to grab him. As he leans forward, you bring your Warhammer up, smashing him right in the face, breaking his nose. You see blood going everywhere. He stumbles backwards with a roar and falls backwards off of the tower, tripping you hear in this loud thud, and you almost feel the whole tower shake a little bit. A couple of the stones start to crumble a little bit and fall from the shaking. And the creature is now laying on the ground, not moving. It's one eye staring up. Nice. Oh, I hit it. I meant to do that. Whoop. And it is no longer moving. All right. With that, you guys are going to get three points of experience. You guys yeah. did that well. Man, had you been on the ground, this guy could have done a lot more damage. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's, all, it's all about the high ground. <laughs> all right. Thanks, Obi-Wan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good work. All right. Man, well, 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 well done, guys. Well done. That was quite impressive. I, I'm glad I, I came with you guys. Go down and What's open that trap now. Like three, three gold? Is that what he's down to now? <laughs> yeah. Moving backwards? <laughs> yeah. How big is a Cyclops' single eye? Uh, the single eye itself, um, in our terms, probably you would assume, because I mean, you can only see the you know part of it because it's the eyelid. Um, its eye is probably about softball-sized. Yeah. Well, that makes a nice trophy. I think I'll carve that eye out. Okay. Give me yeah. an, an agility check to try to pull out that eye. Pop it like a balloon. <laughs> I keep forgetting I can just hit agility here. 
uh, with a 14. Uh, it takes you some time and you're very, very careful with it, um, but you are able to get it out in mostly intact. Um, what do you put it in? Good question. Uh, <laughs> sure, but uh, Do uh, cockatrices uh, beaks still have petrification powers after death? <laughs> Give me an intelligence check. See what what your character believes. With well, a four, you assume it does, <laughs> and you go get one of the cockatrice, and you try to like, I don't know, scratch the eye with the beak itself, but nothing happens. Okay, are cockatrices' beaks still? I would guess they're a little bit valuable. I mean, like, don't they go into like? potions of petrification and things like that it's a possibility let's carve up some beaks yeah absolutely you can gather a few beaks there's like three of them down there right yeah that part's pretty easy um you know if you guys had half pint with you it'd be no problem him and his, his chicken butchery but uh <laughs> you know he's not with you currently so uh, he you probably guys... would have protested us killing them in the first place <laughs> You guys do your best. Uh, you know, you guys have spent some time with him and, and, and seen him at least prepare some some chickens before. So uh, you guys have an idea of how to deal with um, these kind of, you know, bird-like creatures um, and are able to get the beaks no problem. So you guys have three cockatrice beaks. Just to be safe, I don't think we should eat them. No. <laughs> as tempting uh, I, as it would be to roast chicken tonight, I don't think we should eat them. Uh, I don't have a... Way of carrying it. If somebody else has a good way, you can have a cyclops eye from it. But uh, I don't know what you do. Uh, I guess preserve it in in vinegar or something like that. If Last you... of oil. Yeah, I'm not sure that would preserve it. <laughs> but yeah, it would look good in a jar with a. With some... I mean, you can pour out the oil. I mean, it'd be a uh, flask, and you can put the eye in it. Carving up. <laughs> That'd be a pretty big opening on a flask to be soft. Yeah. Body. Up all size, I don't know. Put it in a sack and hope it doesn't rot. Yeah. Um, I'm going to move trap door the, Yeah, I'm going to dig the dirt and whatever to make that trap door open. Okay. Uh, so you guys climb down the side. You do find, like, down here, there are a few other sacks. It looks like there are some sacks with, like, grain in it that he got from somewhere that he was using to feed the cockatrice. Um, there's a couple empty sacks as well, so you can use one of those to put the eye in. Um, so whoever has the eye, um, go ahead and just put that in your inventory, one Cyclops eye. And whenever we get somewhere for you to try to sell it or barter it or do whatever you do with it, at that point, we'll do a luck check to see if it's still intact enough to be worth anything. Um, and then uh, with that, you go over towards the trap door. You have to push some of the hay and stuff off to the side. Um, and it definitely looks like this guy had not tried to go inside this thing. Um, so you, you open the, you're able to open the trap door and you see it leads down into a dark chamber. Well, light a torch. Light. what do you see down there? Light a torch, stick a torch down and see if we can see anything better. Okay. Uh, the trap door itself, uh, is, leads into a chamber that's maybe maybe 10 by 10, maybe a little bit smaller than that. Um, and it seems that there is a, uh, a chest down here. Ooh, loots. Let's go get the loots. Let me go check to make sure it's not trapped. Sure. Okay. So Lower me down. Go ahead and... Or uh, can we just climb down? Uh, you can climb down. It's, uh, it's not, it's, I mean, it's maybe 10 feet down. Um, so you can basically hang and drop. Um, there isn't a ladder here. It looks like there was a ladder. Like there's some remnants of something like attached to the wall, um, but uh, no more ladder actually functioning here. All right. Maybe in this case we, you need to make a quick escape. Let's use the grappling hook and drop a rope anyway. Okay. Yeah, I think. That's easy enough to do. Uh, does anybody go down with the barber at this time? I'll go. Nice. Okay, so that's uh, Hundo and Barber, right? Yep. Okay, so you guys hop down inside. Uh, Barber, you're going to go ahead and do a tr check for traps? Yep, find okay. trap, right? Go ahead. Ooh. 
with a nine, uh, you're looking at it, you don't notice anything that looks like it would be a trap, but you do hear a buzzing sound. And as you have that buzzing sound, uh, a bunch of creatures come out and attack you. Um, basically a swarm, from the chest? yeah, swarm of, not, not from the chest, but it looks like from like holes and stuff in the wall. A uh, swarm of insects comes flying out and is going to yeah. make an attack at you as they fly out past you. So it's actually going to hit both of you that are down inside uh, if it hits. Damn ground wasps. <laughs> That's dumb. Thank God. Uh, Windows down here. I wonder why that's not going for me. If I have to, I'll just do it manually. Yep, I got some doting mana. All of a sudden, you guys are going to have to see like five fucking rolls of this. <laughs> uh, so, uh, this is just a plus one to bite um, at both of you. Uh, I think a nine be misses both of you. The insects yep. come flying up out of the hole. As they come flying up out of the hole, they're going to bite at the other three of you that are up above. Still not working. We'll do it manually. Uh, nope. They all fly oh, yeah. out and fly past you guys. No biting anybody. All right. So insects fly out of this hole. All right. With that, uh, you you don't see anything that would indicate the trap. The chest is trapped. All right. I'll open it. All right. Just you got to open it. And... That's what a thief would do. It looks like there was a lock on the chest, but as you go to like kind of mess with the 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 lock itself, the wood seems to have rotted enough that the lock basically breaks off, and you're able to open it up. Inside, um, you find there is a staff, a sword, a set of robes. Um, it looks like a, a ring of some sort with like a sigil on it. And then a scroll in a language that you've never seen before. Cool. The sword. Magic. Is the sword special in any way? Um, you can't really tell, but you could try maybe giving it to Levi and see if he Levi. can sense anything. <laughs> Levi, get down here. We got loot. We'll have to hold it. I can't really touch it if it's made out of steel or iron. You yeah, can you can lay it down and yeah, kind of like put your hands over it and try to get a sense of it. Um, right. so yeah, What's going on? you definitely get a sense that both the staff and the sword are magical. Oh yeah. I'm there. Yes, these things be of magical nature. What? Uh, short sword? Uh, it's a short sword. Yep. Um, I would say with the detect magic and a 19 roll, that does very, very good. Uh, you can determine exactly which objects, creatures are magically enhanced. You can tell different weapons or items are equipped on a creature enchanted. Uh, the cleric receives a rough gauge of the magic strength, revealed as approximate level of a spell, the general range of the bonuses, or weapons or armor, and so on. Objects behind three, blah, blah, blah. Okay, I'd say with that, you identify that the staff um, adds a 1d4 to spell checks that are cast through the staff. Nice. And the short sword is a plus one short sword. Um, and you get a sense of chaotic telepathy. Um, and Ooh. that uh, it, uh, you know, with the telepathy, maybe it even speaks to you. Um, and you get a sense that um, it has an undead touch. Which, let me look and see what that means. I built this thing and then forgot about it. <laughs> Is anybody else chaotic? I am chaotic. Hundo, are you chaotic I... or lawful? Hundo is probably... Um, and, uh, but short sword is not usually his, I mean, he's probably <clears throat> throwing a long sword. What is uh barber used for his main weapon? It's a long sword right now, but a talking short sword could be fun. Yeah. It might Whatever be one. And then the plus is going to easily offset the difference in the D6 to D8. I don't think the cleric would want it. Nope, I'm what lawful. I have nothing to do with that. <laughs> oh, the elf. Can we see yeah. this. And then the staff's probably going to go to the elf, right? To Levi, for spellcasting. Unless. Uh... Or is that divine spellcasting too? Does it right. does it have a distinction? Just spell checks cast through. Yeah, this one's not chaotic Ooh. or lawful. So you guys can you guys can fight over it over the staff. Um... I'd vote. I mean, we really want to throw some bonuses at Pete. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I would want to give it to him anyway, since he's. We want those yep. spell checks for healing to work. 
Yeah. Nehemiah, are you Bart, chaotic? Lord, I, I think that's fine. Okay. All right. So, is kind of the dark one. With that, I think I need to make both these items. I don't think I've made them yet. This is the plus one short sword. That's not the correct one. Does anybody right. want my long sword then? Levi, do you need a long sword? I have one. Oh, you got a mithril sword, right? Yeah, yeah as an I elf, that's been mithril in you. Oh, do you have a long sword? Missile weapons. To... Oh, yeah, I've got a long sword. Should be given that uh, missile weapons to the man at arms. Make him buy it. I could give him the long sword. Better than his hand axe, right? Is it a hand axe or a battle axe? I think he's got a hand axe. It's like a makeshift battle axe thing. Yeah, give him a long sword. Yeah. All right. Let's... And then what was the rest of the treasure? Staff. Uh, so you got Green. the you got the wizard Green staff, sword. the short sword. There are some uh, wizard robes. They look like some like ornate wizard robes. Um, there is a signet ring, so basically like a ring with a sigil on it. Um, and a scroll in a language that you don't understand or don't recognize. And when I was checking for... Oh, wait, he already cast the spell closet, so... Yep, and yeah, you rolled well enough that you guys got a good identification on all these. Right. What's, this, what's the sigil on the ring look like? Uh, the sigil itself um, looks like, basically, in the middle of it, almost looks like a gem in, a, in the shape of an eye. And then there's fire going around that eye. Oh. Detect fire. Uh, I'll, I'll try putting that ring on. Okay. Uh, the ring itself uh, doesn't seem to be magic of any kind. You don't get any sense of, of magic. Um, but looking at it, uh, you know, you yourself would value it. At, you know, it's probably worth at least 20 gold pieces. Okay. And then even the elf, the thief can't make any thing of the scroll? Uh, no, d definitely. It seems like it's written in like arcane sigils or an arcane language of some sort. Could I maybe do something Levi. like that? Yeah, Levi can read it. Uh, do you have uh, read language or? Read magic. Let's see. Pete was the taking the magic staff, right? Uh, yeah. I guess so, yeah. Um, detect uh, magic would give me the approximate level of the spell. Um, so would we be able to know that at least? On the uh, you sense it's possibly a second level spell. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> I don't nice. have magic. Can't use that yet anyway but okay. maybe maybe levi holds on to it see if he can decipher it later yeah sounds good i feel like we're still missing one thing there's the short sword the staff the ring robes. the scroll and the robes right five things yeah if these are robes of protection maybe i don't know is the elf what's the elf wearing right now i wear leather on might be good to take the robes anyway because it could signify some kind of status or something like some secret club or cult right. or something that we might possibly infiltrate in the ring to get into some kind of grand poobah meeting or something the order right. are these right? uh, are these robes human size or cyclops size they're human sized and what what are they adorned with any decoration or anything that might give us a clue about their nature uh, they're very colorful with like silver trim. Um, looks like uh, the pattern. Um, I was gonna have whoever wants to wear them. You can pick the color, but basically, it looks like it's a uh, it's you know a solid color, but then it has like uh, not gems, but something that seems to reflect a little bit. So it almost looks like there's stars on it, um, and then the silver trim. And they're basically just good. just robes. You get no magical sense off of them. Since the barber has met the order. Does he recognize anything from these robes that would match anything that the order was wearing, either their sigils or the colors or anything? Not here, um, but you do recognize um, up above where you know they saw the bed and stuff like that. There were other things laying around. Um, no one searched that area yet, but you did see kind of off on one corner 
uh, what looked like a scrap of clothing, like a, maybe a, a piece of a tunic or something that seemed to have the colors of the the Order of the Gauntlets colors. Hmm. Interesting. We're we'll going to look at that later. All right. Putting the sword together really quick for you guys. Um, so this is plus one Hydra. short sword. Uh, it is chaotic. Um, it has a 14 yep. intelligence, does telepathy. Its purpose is to undermine authority, and its power is undead touch. So undead touch is when you score a critical with this weapon, you roll a d30 on the undead critical table. Oh, So you roll fun. crits as an undead creature. That could be fun. <laughs> it probably picked out the barber as the most chaotic member of the party. Okay, so that has been made, and the barber is carrying that? Yep. All right. And then we want to give my longsword to the man-at-arms. Okay. Because so he, he was using a hand axe before, right? Yeah. Okay, so he's got a longsword now, so I'll give up my longsword. I'll take it off my inventory. Okay, I've already put it in the in Tar's inventory, so he has that now. And he'll be plus one to attack with that. All right. So is uh, it a plus one to damage or a pl only a plus one to hit? Uh, he's a plus one to hit. Okay. All right. Um, we have the wizard robes. Is anybody going to take those? Well, Somebody like should. Who, who didn't get something? Because uh, you might be able to sell it at the very least. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to go through this really quick. So we've got the staff has been given out. The short sword has been given out. You have the... Uh, the wizard robes. Who is taking the wizard robes? Is it Levi? Yeah, I'll or, put them in. Right. Or Hamdo? Either oh, one. Okay. Yeah, just give it to Levi then. Maybe. All right, I'm just going to add that under equipment. So you'll have wizard robes now. Um, it looks yeah, like the closest thing we have to a wizard, so. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> True that. All right, so wizard robes. I'll put a brief description in here. Uh, what color are the robes? I'm going to let you choose. Now let's go with purple. All right. Very nice. regal. Purple color of robes. royalty, yes. Yeah. Purple robes yeah. with silver trim. And we'll say star like sparkles. There you go. All right. Uh, and then, Levi, did you take the arcane scroll as well, or is that from a different time? Yeah, that's. I just. Okay, perfect. Okay, so you got those, and then who's taking the signet ring? Hundo. I am. Hundo? Oro. Okay. Yeah. Did you already put that in your inventory, or do you need to put it in? Yeah. Yeah, I put it in his okay. fire eyes. Got it. Perfect. Got it. All right. Um, so that is everything you find down in the bottom. Is so this the... a... Go ahead. What I was just going to say is... is uh... I don't know how to ping the dang map, but that uh, looks like a tunnel below us. Is that a wall or is that actually like a pathway? Here, uh, yes. Yeah. So these are the uh, these are the pathways. So they're the pathways that are outside that lead. Basically, as you as you looked at those, they're basically stone pathways that lead from building to building. And on the side of those pathways are like the leftover remnants of what look like arched walls, kind of like it would be like a courtyard type thing. Um, with these pathways that led in between the buildings without ceilings. So it's just kind of like ornate pathways to lead you from one to the next. Yeah, there's still so a whole other building we can look through. Yeah, what if we open the building and it's like a lady cyclops and eight baby cyclopses? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Then the short sword. Well, I'm chaotic, so. <laughs> Me and the sword will be satisfied with that. But um, can, can we look at the robes of the order? up top i want to see if they are torn at all like if they look like the people have been killed who are wearing them if there's blood stains or if they look like they've just been set aside and discarded so it looks like it just been set aside and discarded and it's literally like the size like it's maybe maybe eight inches of cloth um it's white with like it looks like it's like one corner of a uh you know of a piece of cloth and that corner has some gold trim to it and it's white Hey, Barbara, do you know the sigil of the uh, of the these anti-magic guys? 
the yeah, order. Yeah, you, I, you I feel guys like are I would fairly familiar. Every, everyone is pretty that. familiar with them because they've all heard the stories and stuff. It's basically the sigil is a, a gauntlet over a sun, basically. Um, but there's not enough of this material to see any sigil. It literally looks like the bottom corner of a um, cloak or something. Well, okay. they were here at least. You know that much. Yeah. They might still be in this. Be, be, it could be in the other building. I mean, they probably would have heard all the ruckus. Um, have we examined all the stuff on this floor, on the cockatrice floor? Yep. Uh, right. there, there's feathers everywhere. You still see, like, maybe even some seed that spilled out in certain areas. Um, maybe some remnants of food and stuff that the Cyclops have been eating. But other than that, uh, you've seen everything. It seemed to be basically just his sleeping chamber and where he kept his cockatrices. Yeah. Help me remember, let's go gather that big sack of nuts and berries, too, that the Cyclops had. That, that should be a few meals. Yeah, that's a good call. Should we check out this building? Yeah. We have, like, three more buildings, right? Each of these is a separate building? Yeah. Yep. Wow. Well, uh, two of them are buildings, and then the bottom one um, is a courtyard. Okay. All right, you guys don't have to, to move. Uh, oh, no, we'll move your characters. You guys, so you guys uh, step outside and follow the pathway around to the next building. Um, as you get to the edge of that building, there is another door that looks like it is, um, you know, loosely hanging on, almost like it'd come off and it'd been just kind of propped back up against the building. Is the sword talking to me at all? Uh, currently, um, I would say as you are, are holding it, um, mm -hmm. you're maybe getting the I'm sense, the sense of finally, finally, after all this time. And it's kind of just like, it seems to be excited that someone has finally picked it up. Oh, I'm excited too. <laughs> I have a sword that's talking to me. <laughs> I'm very excited by this. Yeah. You, you, you don't get a sense that it knows how long it was down there, but it definitely has a sense of eagerness to finally get out and, and do something as it's been down there for quite some time. All right. Well, I grab that leading door with both hands and pick it up and move it to the side. All right. With a creak and a snap, it kind of boom falls to the ground with a bit of a thud. Um, it's rotting wood kind of breaks apart a little bit more as it hits the ground. Um, and as you look inside, uh, you see another large stone building. This one's roof is mostly intact, so there's not a lot of light in here. Um, maybe from a couple little spots, you see like beams of light coming in. Um, and the, uh, the room itself, uh, you see a large stone structure, um, had a bit of a vaulted ceiling. And you see at the, uh, the north wall is a raised stone platform on which rests a couple statues. One looks like a man and the other like a woman, and it looks like they're bent over in prayer. Um, the, the statues themselves look like, uh, you know, they're, they've almost been worn a little bit smooth, like almost. Like they're not, you don't see full, like they're brand new. They definitely look like they've been here for quite some time. And, uh, yeah, that's about all you see currently. Maybe Pete can recognize them when he comes back. So there's no, nothing else in here? Just the statues? Just the two statues. Check this one. Okay. Uh, you move down. As you move down through the central courtyard area, um, you see in the middle a fireplace. Um, it's basically, you know, stone ring um, with, you know, embers and stuff and some burnt wood. Uh, the fire's not currently going. Um, and it looks like there's a makeshift kind of cooking station set up over it. Uh, to where he probably hung like a pot or something to to boil or put meat to cook. Okay. And then as you head towards this last smaller building, this small building looks like uh, you can see from where you are that like the 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 corner kind of like right here, this uh, northeast corner there, uh, is crumbled down and part of the wall is missing. Um, and it looks like a good portion of the roof is missing as well. And uh, the door on the front is like half destroyed. So there's like the bottom half of the door is still there. Um, so you look inside and plenty of light gets in here. Uh, you'd say, you know, once you get closer, maybe 50% of this building is still standing. And on the far wall, so the Western wall there, you see a uh, fountain. 
Yeah. <laughs> There's water here if anybody wants to drink from it, but detect it first. Detect poison. Detect magic. Detect tentacles. <laughs> <laughs> So two uh, things. Two things for Pete to do when he gets back. Who did it to the fountain? You're gonna drink it? No, I'm gonna shoot an arrow into the fountain. Okay, you shoot an arrow into the fountain. Um, you can't see the liquid inside, but as the arrow goes into the fountain, go ahead and give me an uh, just like an attack, like you're you're shooting the fountain. See how well you do. Or if you hit the stonework outside. All right, Pete, we're investigating this last uh, small building to the northeast uh, here, or sorry, south, southwest, completely backwards. Uh, southwest, um, there seems to be, you know, about 50% of this building is still standing, and there is a fountain on the western wall. And then this building up here in the middle, uh, nothing in that room except for on the northern wall, there was a raised platform with two statues. It looked like a man and a woman that are bent over in prayer, and they're fairly worn. Um, so with an 18, Hundo shoots an arrow into the fountain. As he shoots an arrow into the fountain, a, it looks like the liquid inside, a bit of a greenish liquid, starts to almost climb and move upwards. Yep, good call. Slime? Never trust the fountains in DCC. They always have slimes. <laughs> All right. The slime creature seems to start moving up and out of this fountain. We need fire, acid, spells. Uh, yeah. Uh, Barbara, go ahead and since you were the one that was looking in there too, go ahead and just give me a uh, intelligence check as you kind of peer around the room. Eighteen. Um, but eighteen. Uh, you see the remnants of what looks like uh, an adventurer inside there. It looks like uh, somebody who's been dead a good long time. Uh, it seems to be a backpack next, like next to the body that looks like it's possibly rotted or been, you know, singed a bit. Not wearing order robes? Nope. Okay. Civilian. Um, should we fire some arrows or shoot some? Yeah, fire? I'm going to retreat a bit and uh, light a torch. Um, and maybe, I don't know, I we, maybe we can try a flaming arrow, but I have a feeling I'm not going to be very effective against this thing. I, have a fl I do have a flaming arrow left, one. I use it? Yeah. Uh, from the old troll days, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, is that fine, Judge? Shoot a fire arrow? In you there? can absolutely shoot a fire arrow in there. Okay. Let's go for it. All 18 right. for five points of damage plus fire. An 18 definitely hits the fire or hits the arrow. Uh, being a piercing weapon, he only takes two points of damage from that. Um, but the fire, go ahead and roll me a d4 for the fire. See how effective it is on it. Uh, four. Another two points of damage. So he takes four points of damage, and the slime kind of reels back. Can I, can I tweak it, that with a luck roll? You absolutely can. Can I tweak the fire damage? Yep. All right, so I'll spend one, so I'm down to ten luck. And then go for a luck roll. Come on, luck die. All right, two more fire damage. Two more points of damage. That is enough. This thing starts to ooze its way out, and as the arrow hits it, the fire catches it. And you see the slime start to reel back a little bit and then just start to turn to ash. And you've taken out the primeval slime pretty quick and easy. Oh, yeah. So I'll Oops. give, you, I'll give, I'll give uh, you know, um, no experience for that one. That was an easy one. <laughs> oh, that's right. Not even one? You were the only one that did Well, I guess Hundo fired into it, but you are the only one that did it. You get no no experience. That was an easy one. These things had like no hit oh. points. No hit points and a low AC. Okay. No danger. I need a single shot. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I guess we'll take a look at that backpack then. All right. See if there's any other good loots. You go and look into the bag, um, and you get the sense that whoever this person was was possibly an alchemist as well, as you see three small vials with different colored liquids inside. And it looked like uh, he possibly a merchant. Even he had a small sack with some coins as well. Uh, there's a here. I'll just type it in here, Sephora, so we don't lose it. Pete Levi, unknown potions. Come check it out. I, I mean, I'm an alchemist by trade, so 
There you go. So you find 150 gold pieces, 35 silver pieces, and 54 copper pieces in his sack. Who's the alchemist? Pete. Pete. Oh, nice. All right, Pete, All right. you can there go, you go ahead and uh, give me intelligence check for the first one. I wasn't very good at my job, though. No, no. <laughs> All right, looking nice. at the first one, you get a sense that it's a potion of fire resistance. So it'll help prevent you from, from heat damage or fire and those kind of things if you were to drink it. All right, the second one. Uh, 12. With this one, you get a sense that this one, um, you know, from, from smelling it and stuff, it smells a bit sweet. Um, it probably has some kind of beneficial property. You're thinking possibly a healing potion. Nice. And there's a third potion. Third one, you can't quite figure out what it is. It's a, a bluish liquid, um, kind of with some like bubbles floating around inside of it, but you get no sense of what it truly is. I'll drink it. You drink it? <laughs> nice. You drink it and uh, don't really sense um, any difference. You don't feel anything happen to you. As you drink it, I'll let you know what it was. It was a potion of water breathing. Uh, and since you're not in water, you really feel no effects. <laughs> <laughs> was there something in the fountain? Uh, something... As you go to look in the fountain, um, it seems as the slime came out, um, there is still kind of like water, a bit of water in the fountain, but it looks very, very murky. All right. Let's go wow. back at uh, the altar and take a look at it. It seems like... Uh... Yeah, get Pete to take a look at those statues too. Uh, Pete, you go back mm -hmm. and uh, as you're standing between the statues, kind of getting a sense of them, um, you feel almost a closer connection, like uh, the clarity between you and your god um, seems a bit more clear right now. Um, what that means is basically like if you were to cast a spell in the presence of these, that you would get um, basically like a plus two to your spell checks while in the presence, like in this room. I, sh I could use some healing. I I'm down two, but I only have six hundred points to start with, so I'm two two thirds of my hit points right now. Sure. Does this room boost uh, uh, lay on hands too? Yep. Yeah, any spell check you cast, so you plus two to whatever you cast. Cool. And you have your staff now too, so you can roll a d4. So roll your roll your spell check just That's as amazing. is as normal. That staff is so good. And uh, roll a d4. I, I think he's going to get it anyhow. Which, yeah, he does, but we can max it out, right? <laughs> Not that he yeah, needs it. He's, he's only level one. one, so he only gets one hit point, or one hit die anyway. All right, and then plus two. So you rolled basically a 20, uh, what was that, 23? Uh, so with that, That's great. whoever you're healing gets his one hit die. Who are you healing the first? The blesses will be amazing with that, that stuff. Hundo? Yeah. All right, so Hundo, yes. you get a uh, d12 of hit die back so as long as you don't roll one you're be back up to max yep there you go you're back up to max health <laughs> yay <laughs> all right i think the barber you're down a hit point it looks like yeah i'm okay i can sleep it off okay all right. but I, I love it because it's gonna it's gonna lower the chance of you getting disapproval though it's another benefit yeah. of the staff mm -hmm. Really need. I'm just gonna. It's gonna save us lots of gold. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> True that. All right. With that, uh, you've searched out all the area. You feel like you found pretty much everything that's here. Um, it looks like someone did the math. Um, Thirty-seven gold pieces each. There's, there's a bit of a decimal left over. We can give one gold to Tars. All right. He'll take it. Uh, there's also 35 silver and 54 copper. I don't take any silver. Okay. It's too much math for the barber. Give me those. No intelligence. 37 gold. 
Uh, it was uh, everybody gets 37 gold. 42. Okay. There's 35 silver pieces and 54 copper pieces. Total. It's basically nine silver each, if you want to do it that way. That'll work. And then you're feeling generous and you give the 54 copper to the uh, man-at-arms, right? <laughs> to Tars? <laughs> sure. No, that's yeah. a good pop. Sure. All right. I, I, since I don't have much other things to apply my occupational skills of being a, a former mercenary, I do use that as a as an influence on this man at arms in terms of keeping an eye on him and his morale and All right. trying to support him a little bit. Perfect. Give him some him? coin. Giving him some coin helps him helps him uh, gain a little bit of confidence there. He's like, oh, all right, maybe this is this is being worth it. All right. Would Hunter yeah. be able to train him in that case in downtime? Uh, I would say in the travel time and stuff, maybe a little bit of sword fighting and stuff, but not going to be enough to really train him to be any additional stat Work level? bonuses. Yeah, no, no stat bonuses. You have to spend some, like you know, like you guys training for like a month or plus to to really gain a stat from it. All right. Uh, so as you guys have gotten here, you have found one piece of cloth that uh, looks like it has the colors of the Order of the Gauntlet. Um, so it's a possibility that they have come through this way. You don't see any other signs. There's no, you know, blood. There's no bodies. There's no nothing else to give you any signs that anything else happened here. And when you guys saw the uh, Cyclops, he looked like he was in, you know, good shape. Like he was unwounded. All right. I go out and pick that sack that he dropped with all the berries and stuff in it. How okay. much? Uh, fr- uh, I would say there's enough fruit or not fruit, but berries and stuff in there um, to give you guys at least three days of uh, you know, rations. Okay. So maybe they came here and left and went across the river. Yeah, my guess is that the planks, like he wouldn't need he wouldn't need those planks. The the Cyclops, he would just wade through the river, right? So the planks gotta be for somebody else who's smaller and lighter, who can't wade through the river. You'd think the Order would be at war with a Cyclops, though. Like, that's the kind of thing they'd want to take out. It might not have Well, been the here. Barber thinks they're evil and corrupt. And they're the incarnation of evil, as far as he's concerned. There's nothing good There's about them. a wizard here at some point. So, like, that's where all these wizardly things are. They might have wanted to just either kill the wizard if he was still here, or just destroy his items, or, like, yeah. Yeah, they could have just come here and left again. True. I don't know. Should we go back then and go for the other cyclops? Ooh. I mean, or or we just or we just range further across the river into the into the wild. What do, does uh, Tars know anything that's east of, or whatever of the river across the river? No, this, uh, I mean, I, I know the mountains are, you continue east. I, I don't know how far, but uh, uh, outside of this tower, I haven't really heard many stories of, of anything out further past this. Well, as much as I want to hunt them down, we don't really have any solid leads. We'd just be wandering in the wilderness. Yeah. And I'm, I'm happy that you guys, you know, followed me this far. For my personal reasons, so I'm I'm satisfied for today. We can go back, finish off the other Cyclops, till we hear more about the order. That sounds like a good plan. Okay, so we're heading back to town. Yeah. Or we're gonna just head straight to the uh, thieves' camp. Yeah. True. Sure. I we can camp well, here for tonight and then head out first thing in the morning, right? I guess I'm asking uh, more because so that's on the south road, and I don't know is it all just all uncharted wilderness between yeah, whatever it's, that was? Yeah, it's pretty much uncharted wilderness between here and there. Um, you don't know any landmarks. You don't know anything really to help you direct yourselves. Um, to really help direct yourselves. Yeah, the best thing to you, for you to do to get to a place that you know of 
would be to follow the path you used to come here. Right, go to Elm yeah. Street and then maybe from there down. Yep. Yeah. So we'll camp here tonight, then head back to the town and go back to the camp, the bandit camp. Sounds good. Something like that. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. You guys are able to make your camp here for the night. Um, you think at some point throughout the night, you hear the, the calling of the cockatrices somewhere, you know, maybe off in the woods somewhere, but uh, they don't seem to bother you at night. Um, and you wake up in the morning, gaining your one hit point back if you need any hit points. Yay. Uh, Barbara, you get your one luck back as well for, you know, one or two, I can't remember, for the, for the... Uh, it's my level, so it'd be level. one so, right now. Yep, one back. All right. And Pete, in the presence of those statues, you'll gain one luck back as well. Ooh. All right. Nice. So with that, you guys wake up in the morning, and you will take off on the next session. It is 11 o'clock, so we've hit our three hours for the day, um, and we'll go from there. So that was a fun one. Uh, thank you guys for playing. Thank you for watching this episode of Stories from Valtara. If you are interested in playing DCC but don't know where to start, check out the Dungeon Crawlers Discord link below, where countless open games are posted both online and in person. And if you are enjoying the series, don't forget to like and subscribe, and we will see you next time.